All right, it's time. Another week. ZTDD Radio. This is episode 805. For the week of July 29th. Jesus, is it really almost August? It'll be August on yeah, right? Thursday? God damn. But anyway, on the show this week, I have Anthony. Yeah. And then Terrence will be joining us, I believe, in a little while. I swear, man, these people all turn into Drew. What's going on? I have not like written a review, even though I like I I can't I can't comment. I have issues on the other side of things. Jesus Christ, what happened to y'all? I fell off, man. I burnt out. <laughs> My Everybody knees gave does. out, ruined my fucking career. <laughs> Everybody burns out eventually, except for me, because I just, just whatever, keep going. I feel like I kind of have to at this point. I couldn't afford to buy all these games. Ain't no way. And I like all the True, games. I've tried it, and it's awful. Yeah, I you go into debt, man. Can't do it. But let's be fair. Like like seventy to eighty percent of them ain't worth buying. Like, at the at the at the big price at the beginning anyway. Yeah. <laughs> games have been weird lately. Not gonna lie. Seventy dollar games. Like, without PlayStation putting out anything big this year, I feel like there's not been like a a, a game that's like. Be, like, there's been good games, but there's not been, like, that. It doesn't feel like a, the premium experience. Yeah, it's and, like, Xbox is fucked up so much, and it's like, you don't even feel like they have a new console, like, all their shit's just old. I mean... Which is I, weird, right? Because, like... I have no idea what that fucking company's doing at this point. Man. Yeah, and it's weird no because it's like, knowing. everything feels old, but at the same time, they don't get the old games, which is weird. I don't know, man. I just, I still, I still am waiting for like the game, you know. Oh, for the next where gen? No, like, well, yeah. I mean, the, the current gen, I guess, really, where I'm like, I, I need the game where it's like, I, I have to play that. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh... Yeah, I'm gonna and, and this is really weird because Spider-Man Two probably would have been in that list. Although I was never as big of a fan of the first Spider-Man, um, like everybody else was. I I do love that game. I do think it's like the best Spider-Man story in a long time, which tells you a lot about the state of the comic books. Um, I don't but, know. But in my in my head, I cannot get over the fact that they changed the face. So. It's it's not even that, but like, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that game's not good. That game is good, but that game came and went like a wet fart. Like people talked about I mean, it for like a all month. The, all the all the games that come out that are like for next gen systems have kind of felt like that. I hate to say it. Like I think Hell Divers Two is probably the one that's gotten the most talk. That and Starfield, but Starfield didn't get to talk for the uh, same reason. Starfield got a lot of talk and then had like a month. Yeah, but it was for different and I, reasons. And, and, so. and for and f- and for what that game is, and for what Bethesda's main series have done in terms of conversation, like Skyrim is still talked about. Skyrim is still memed. Mm-hmm. There is none of that for Starfield. No, not yet anyway. And I, I don't think there will be. Honestly, it, it may, may not. I, like I've, and, I, I mean, there's always going to be memes, yes, but I don't think any of them are going to be, you know, took an arrow to the knee sort of levels. No, nah, the potato thing is up there, but not. It'll never be arrow to the knee. That's for sure. I don't know. I so, played a little bit of it this week, and like. It finally feels like a good, like a really, really good experience on console, which is weird because it's been like a year. So I don't know. Yeah, like I, I've yet to see an Xbox. Not that there's many. Like outside of Hi-Fi Rush, which I might see if my computer can just 
squeeze out, you know. Um, nothing from Xbox and mm -mm. from Sony. I I don't love Horizon Two as much as I liked the first game, and so but I kind of fell off of it. So but it's on PS4, be... so. But not. I was getting to that. But the the weird interquel DLC thing. Oh yeah, the... is not. Which is weird. And so, but... like, if I liked Horizon Two more, I probably would have been more um, excited to invest in a PS Five. You know what's funny is the game that I think is worth buying a PS5 for doesn't feel like a PS5 game, and that's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Like, I'm assuming it feels like a PS2 sort of action RPG sort of thing. It's not that. It's that, like, that the, the first one was, like, all over the PS4. And, and I don't mean that it doesn't feel like a PS5 game and, like, how it's structured, because it's a beautiful game. Um, got some really cool additional stuff in it, but like, how do you make a part two of a game that's not even available in the system you bought part one on? It just feels weird to me. I mean, that whole remake is weird to me. Oh, a hundred percent. I'm still not sure if they're sure what they want to do with it. <sighs> The second game feels like they corrected the problems of the first game because the first game, from what I've heard, I mean you you didn't talk nearly as positive about the first game as you did. The uh, first game felt like a proof of concept, a demo almost. The the ground zeros of the Final Fantasy VII. I mean, hundred percent. That's exactly what it felt like. I felt like it covered like <laughs> yeah, I can nothing. That. Right, because you don't leave the city. But I always said that was going to be a big problem because the city is a big portion of the story of that game, right? The, the other discs are because, like, the city basically takes up a full disc. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, yeah, you get to the Golden Saucer. You get to some areas, but, like, that that first section is the most dense part of that game. And it doesn't feel like it in the in the remake. Like... I think there's like four or five areas you go to in Rebirth. Really? Yeah, like it's a lot. Wow. So like, by comparison, you're just like, well, yeah, that first game. Huh. Yeah, but I, I like I'm saying, like, I think I think they needed to. I'm, I don't defend the whole fucking multiple game remake thing, but I understand for doing what they want to do with it. I understand the size of remake it doesn't i'm not okay with it but i understand it all i can tell I you is don't don't mention that game on social media when you're when you're just making a joke or a point oh people, did you learn firsthand oh people got mad this week so i just made a joke because like they finally put call of duty on game pass uh what was it modern warfare 3 or whatever and I joked, I was like, yeah, by, you know, they'll they'll have all the Call of Duties on Game Pass by the time Final Fantasy VII Remake is done. And people got mad. I was like, why are you mad? I'm not, like, saying a game is bad or I'm just saying it's taken a hell of a long time to do, like, something that shouldn't take a that long to do. A remake of a game. Yeah. But I, I, I still wonder, <laughs> I still wonder, are they even... I don't want to say it because like it, some people will find it spoilers, but like I'm curious of it, it's not spoilers because I'm only talking about remake really, um, and that game's much older. Um, but like the changes they are making in the story, I'm curious of what their goal with this is. Yeah, I do I not have know. a feeling. I know. But then they do, like, when they talk about it, when I read interviews about it, because I'm always curious of, like, how this is going, because it seems way smoother now that they have it figured out. Um, like, now I'm hearing them talk about it more, which you didn't hear about Remake, even, really. Like, mm -hmm. um, I I'm just curious if they're if they're giving the fans what they want, or if they're, like... At, like it's just such a bizarre 
concept to remake a game, but then f- fundamentally fuck with it. So you two felt like they were giving people what they wanted. I will just but say then, that. Like, you know, but did, did people want this or did people want, did people want a, a different outcome for the story of Final Fantasy VII, which I feel like what this is kind of trying to paint a picture towards? Or did they just want like a 3D version of Final Fantasy VII? And I can't, I don't know if they're sure what they want to give, but I feel like I don't know. I, I feel like originally it was like, we're going to give a different story with this. We're going to change fundamental things to put things play out differently. But then like hearing you talk, because we've talked about um, that because I don't care about spoilers. Um, hearing that, I'm like, I don't know. It sounds like they're doing a pretty good job of translating Final Fantasy VII to a 3D game. That's what people talk about. They talk about those moments that they remember from the old game happening in the new game, being like, oh my god, it looks so amazing. Yeah, I don't know. It just, I, I originally, because like, with Remake, I thought, wow, they're okay, so they're gonna like, fuck around with the story quite a bit. It feels like I'm playing through Disney's Star Wars <laughs> trilogy. <laughs> Where the first game's like, oh, okay, you're doing your, you're, you're clearly going back to the source material, but then you're throwing in some stuff for the fans with Disney all the little even... changes, and then the second game is like, unlike unlike Star Wars, where it was completely different. It's like, no, 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 it's more like the old thing. It's like, okay, okay. Star Wars What's is like we're gonna, gonna kill be? the the um, extended universe canon, and then we're gonna oh. bring it back because fuck you. R.I.P. Kyle Katarn, I'll always say it. I mean, I don't want to spoil Star Wars, but like they brought back people that they said were no longer canon because people were mm-hmm. like, oh my god, it's that character. And it's like, what? Thrawn. Yeah. It's like, how do you like dissociate yourself from those Zon books and then bring them back? Like, what are you doing? I don't you know, know here's the here's the sad part. Like, if if Disney really cared, Bob, we're just going off into tangents. <laughs> I have let's put it this way. Hey, everybody, I played Four Swords this week with a friend on Nintendo Switch Online. Hey, it looks pretty good. That's the end of the conversation. <laughs> I don't mean it's not wrong. It uh, what, let's put it this way. It's probably going to be the easiest way to play Four Swords. Anyone will ever have. That's However, good. There's two problems with that. Um, one, the game still benefits all players by having smaller groups of people playing that game. Like, you you get these, uh, like, Triforce medals or whatever. If you get, as long as you finish Four Swords once, it unlocks a new dungeon in A Link to the Past, which is, like, the hardest dungeon by far called the Four Swords Dungeon, and then you fight against four different versions of Link at the end of it. I love that. Like, I love A Link to the Past, but, like, the version I prefer is the Game Boy Advance version because of that extra dungeon. However, I found out that you need ten Triforce Medals, which you get for having the most rupees at the end of every level. So only one person could win it, and if you're trying to get both people to 10 to get a new quest in A Link to the Past, which is like a big, like, how well do you know the world of A Link to the Past? Uh, like, um, riddles. Mm. So you have to run around. You get a new technique if you finish that, but you need 10 medals. So it's not worthwhile having four players because it reduces your chances. And if you're going to make sure everybody goes through and gets 10 medals, like it, that's going to be misery because you're going to have to do that, you know, 40 times. So with two people, it's 20. Still so a it lot. it doesn't benefit having a... Th- and the second thing is that it's not the second game, which is the GameCube one. They need to port that to Switch. But like make it like five dollars and have it be an online game like like five dollars because you need an account or whatever or free if they really wanted to because like that game is stuck on gamecube you can play it solo which is how i played it but it's 
I know your favorite Zelda is a Link to the Past. You need to play that game if you haven't. Ken. What, Four Swords? Four Swords Adventures for the GameCube. Uh, yeah, I have that. I can... Do you, have you played it? Uh, back in the day, not anytime time okay. recent. Oh, man, like, it's, they redid all the Link to the Past sprites for it. You can play it's it by like yourself? Whole... Yeah, you can play it by yourself. Hmm. You switch out the links. It's it's more action based, right? There, but there's still puzzles, so it's still level based, like four swords. But, um, man, it's so good. It it makes me want a game in that art style, where like Link still looks like his Wind Waker tune version, like in Minish Cap and Four Swords. But uh, the world looks like a Link to the Past. Oh my god, that's such a good game. Anyway, sorry, what were we talking about before I said said I played Four Swords? Um, Disney Star Wars or some shit? I don't remember. Oh yeah, the extended universe. You know, you could explain it. This is this is my problem with Disney. They could explain it away by having, by retelling those stories and recontextualizing it, making it like half truths, right? Like these are the stories that people in the Star Wars universe are telling, like bazillion years later, right? Where it's so far removed that it's it's moved into legend, so you can keep all that old stuff and then kind of show what really happened. Because like that's how I'd recontextualize Cal Katarn. I would be like, yeah, he actually is like sort of good at everything. He's a good rogue, but then also has Jedi powers and stuff. But have him not be a Jedi. Have him kind of be a shitbag who just happens to have the abilities of a Jedi and who like lies about all the th- great things he's done, like steal the death star, death star plans. Right. So the legend that he's telling paints him as this image uh, that you see in the games, but then, you know, in the, in the movies slash televisions, the canon, uh, he's, you know, clearly making some of that stuff up, but can then, you know, use Jedi powers. I don't know. They're they're so weird about Star Wars. They're so weird about like the what they take in and what they add. I don't, I don't know if there's like a actual plan. (laughs) I I feel like sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. But uh, I've been trying to watch the some of the shows that they made, and I always have to check. I'm like, when does this take place? Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's weird, man. I don't know. I wish I was excited about Star Wars as as I used to be. Just getting uh, old, grumpy. Yeah, I think I kind of lost interest in Star Wars the moment they said the extended universe didn't exist. Oh, I invested so much in that extended universe. I I think it was more I was so it's kind of like how I feel about Shenmue. I know that's a weird <laughs> segue, but I feel bad for the fans. Like, I don't, I mean, if you say Star Wars fans now, you get a really bad image in your head, but it wasn't always like that. Mm-mm. A lot of those fans, th- those purist fan, like the, the the original Star Wars fans probably fell a little bit more off. Not the sycophants, not the, not the stands, not the crazy <laughs> people, but the people that loved Star Wars and who may have even bought into the prequels. I think when the extended universe was cut off, I, you, I was just like, okay, well, I feel bad for the fan base. Like, that's how I felt. And that's like how I feel about Shenmue, that, that 3 didn't finish the story, because it's like, you're never getting it. No, it's never happening. You never go, like, to, you never go figure out what happened. It, so, like, when they cut off the extended universe, I'm like, well, that just basically said, like, all the stuff you loved about Star Wars, the thing that kept Star Wars a brand that people gave a shit about, like the reason why there's prequel movies, the reason why Disney bought them for whatever billion amount of dollars, like there's a reason why, and it's those fans that they cut off once they bought it. I don't know, that's just shitty. I mean, that's the Disney way. That is true. Which is crazy. I I wouldn't be surprised if behind the scenes they kept trying to bring Lucas back in, and he was just like, no. I still can't believe. <laughs> and yet, and you listen. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying if you think about it in a, I, a not wanting to work on the franchise anymore because people are annoying and B like 
you know, liking money. Uh, how could how could he not sell to Star or to Disney? But he didn't tell them that he was still working on changing the fucking films. So you get that what uh, what is it? Um, McClunky before the firing of the shot. Oh yeah, Greedo, and it's like. Disney had to come out and be like, "Yeah, we." I guess he was still touching it, like, what I should think as a shit post. That's great. Hey, let George do what he wants. His be- the best thing he ever did was buy all this property, and they wouldn't let him build something on it. I can't remember what it was. Like he didn't do it for the most altruistic of reasons, I don't think. But he basically hated this area of Hollywood, so he like built low income housing there. <laughs> Because they wouldn't let him do something else with it, but he could absolutely put in low-income housing. So he's like, yep. <laughs> hey. And the, the fact that he sounds kind of like Kermit the Frog, so they just have this spiteful little man go, mm-hmm. I'm going to put in low-income housing. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Jesus <Christ>. Little menace. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, so that's all you played? Yeah, legitimately, I haven't played anything else, which is kind of crazy. I- I've been wanting to, and then I just don't. Well, I'm going to kick this off with, with sort of a somber tone, but um, I was doing some 360 stuff over the last couple of weeks, so I-, I took apart a 360E, tried to fix it. It's I- It did not fix. There's just something, There's probably something wrong with that system. Um, I, t- I took off the heat sink. Like, clean- like something like... It overheats. Okay, um, something you can't see though. Yeah, I That's can't see it because I took this. I took the heat sink apart, I took the fan apart, I cleaned everything, I repasted it, and I booted it up. And like immediately within like five to ten minutes, it overheated again. I was like, okay, so it's not that. So I don't know what it is. Um, but I did pick up. Just uh, don't like you. Yeah, that's probably what it is. So I just I picked up a 500 for uh, my S because my S still works fine, and I went on the store, started when going. You said through... 500. I was like, what the fuck? And then I realized hard drive. Yes, yes. I totally forgot 360 could do external. If I would have remembered, I just would have done like a what? what? I thought they could only you do, you do USB drives. Oh, uh, I think you can just plug an external hard drive into it. No. I thought I was reading that somewhere. It, it claims it only takes a 500 internal, but I've seen people say they can get a terabyte in there. I was like, huh? What? But I swore I saw yeah, somebody. Holy shit. Yeah, you can just plug that. a you can just plug a regular old hard drive into it. Yeah, and... it's just gotta be it's gotta be FAT32. Yeah, which is fine. You just format it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I can you format a two terabyte to FAT32? Ooh, you have to partition it for that. Yeah. So, like, I have the thing that tricks it. So it makes it fat 32 and it works like that's how I had. Um, yeah, it's like it's partitioned in one chunk, but yeah, it had to be partitioned as fat 32. Um, I did that for my uh, PS threes and I want to say something else. Oh, my uh, 3D, my 3DS. I, I partitioned like a 32 gig or a 64 gigabyte um, SD. That, that I was like trying to figure out because you have to format that because I think anything over 32 gigabytes has to be X fat, right? Mm, I, I don't, I don't know. Most of that new stuff will do it for you. So it doesn't matter. But with 360, yeah. I was like, well, I just bought one of these cheap ass, um, 500 gigabyte drives off of Amazon, uh, because it's got the, the, the shell in it already. And it, you just plug it in and, and it definitely, made a big difference because the old 320 I had in there, like, downloads were so slow because Xbox installs while it downloads and the hard drive was just dying, so everything's moving faster now. But the reason I did it, and by the time you listen to the show, it's going to have happened, the 360 store closes. Um, I saw Wario tweet out that it could be as soon as 5pm today. As of recording this? Yeah, like, I saw him tweet wow. this morning that it, it's, it could be as closed as early as 5 o'clock today. So if there's anything you want to buy, this you is... better have bought it by now. Yeah, I better take a lot. God damn it. It's sad, oh, man. You know what? No. I I I no. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go and spend money on stuff that I'm probably not gonna play. Yeah, I was in there this weekend and I was like, oh, there's singularity, but it's still fifteen bucks and I have the disc, so no, I'm good. Kind of thing. 
But what I'm hoping, and I know it's a hope against hope, it, it ain't going to happen. But I'm hoping once the store shuts down, I'm going to be able to go through my previously downloaded games a little easier. Because that thing sucks if you have a lot. Um, and, and grab some stuff that's delisted that I know I own. Uh, I was able to get the Marvel Origins collection and the Marvel Capcom 2, uh, TMNT reshelled. I know I have X-Men on there, I think. And... I know it's bad, but I wish I had reshelled. Yeah, I own it. Uh, it's on my hard drive. Like, just for the oddity of it. Yeah. With its weird, not right music and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so I was grabbing a bunch of that stuff. I was basically installing everything into the 500 gigabyte drive so I didn't have to go through that crappy list again. And it's just. I. Ugh. You know, there's a period. There's a period of, like, Xbox Arcade that I missed. Um, partially because it was so hard to get my Xbox online. Because I didn't have. Because you had to buy a wireless, right? For it. Oh, uh, yes. You had to right? buy that $100 adapter. So I had to, yeah, so. Uh, I had to basically connect to a like a shitty laptop and use that shitty laptop as like a um oh god what's the word like a go between between it and the wi-fi mm-hmm. so it's yeah. basically a hot spot but you had to wire in yeah kind of like a bridge um, yeah yeah bridge thank you fuck i knew there was a term yeah it was bridge um and uh so i didn't download a lot of games i think oh my god memory is returning do you remember when you could buy DLC on disc? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we did. That's how I played Borderlands. That's how we did Fallout. Like, so, <laughs> you know, I, I think I got a downloaded Braid. And I think I downloaded Perfect Dark. And maybe Banjo-Kazooie. That was it. Man, Xbox Live Arcade is one of the best memories of video gaming. But at the time, part of it was, so not only was it hard to connect online, at the time, I don't think I had a credit card. I was working, but I didn't have a credit card because I was 16. Um, and <laughs> I just remember you had, when you bought cards, you couldn't do it like that you do now. You couldn't go to like a gas station to just buy an Xbox card. Mm-mm. You had to go to a game they- store. But it had that hard plastic shell mm-hmm. around the fucking card. Oh my god, what a fucking piece of shit! And 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 Nintendo did it too. Because I remember buying Wii points cards the same way. Good so old PS10. I just bought prepaid Master cards. <laughs> oh yeah, that works. It. So that's ah so, oh man, that that takes me back and makes me feel like. I was a genius for figuring some of those workarounds, even though I probably just looked them up. God, I remember I was working in game retail at the time when those cards came out, and I remember having to deal with all that shit. It sucked. And, well, I remember... God, now I'm remembering the Wii. Do you remember when Wii came out? Yeah, I was there. I know. I was about to finish the statement. Um, and, and they sold everything in blister packaging. Oh yeah. Blister you know, packaging that, is the thought, devil. That's a thought that I, I forgot, but then I remembered like, yeah, Wii remotes took up like way more shelf space than they needed to. Oh God. It was awful. I hated blister packaging. We used to have tons of that shit. Yeah. Oh my God. Just weird thoughts that I haven't, you know, pictured in a while. This is what, that that's shit. what that's what's called getting old. You start remembering yeah. shit that happened in the past. You're like, God damn it. No, I want to end up like people <laughs> forget where they put their frying pans like the commercial showed because they don't remember the horrors. Oh, oh, man. There's so many good memories. It's It's weird to have like lived through so many generations at this point. And sometimes when I realize how old the shit actually is, it, it makes me sad. Like, next year will be the, what is it, the 20th anniversary of the Xbox 360, which is wild. Man, yeah. That's a long time. And it'll be the, what, 30th anniversary, right, of the PS1? 
It was 1995? Mm, yeah, I think so. I yeah. think so. 1995 was the PS1, so that'll be 30 years next year. 30. You know, my, I realized not too long ago that like my time frame is a little skewed because it, it, I think I think friends and I got like the N64 later than when it actually came out. So we were playing on like older hardware when like so I feel like I was playing N64 and stuff the same time you were, but like we were actually like, a generation behind because we were just for poor. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's I you mean, know what happens. I mean. So, like, yeah. to me, I've, I've realized that recently where I'm like, yeah, I think like when we started to catch, when I started to catch up to what was modern was PS2. I was maybe out, I was just behind like the first couple releases because I got a bunch of games that were greatest hits when I got my PS2, like Dark Cloud had already been out to become a greatest hits, uh, Jack and Daxter. So I was sort of landed right in there, um, like right after like the first year or so. But like I played N64 much later than it came out. Cause like, yeah, 96, right? 96. Yeah. It, it's yeah, funny. I was, I was older than four when I was playing N64. So I can, I can vividly remember my mom and I were driving somewhere after school and I had, you know, we had gotten a phone call at home, like that the N64 launched early and like games or what was it launched early? Like they, 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 they put it on sale it before it was supposed to come out. Um, oh, wow. This was, this was a comma. This was across the globe. Like, like across the U S they were just like, we're going to sell it early. I don't remember the reasoning, but I remember getting the call and like me immediately running to my mother, like, Oh, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Cause I had pre-ordered the system, two controllers in both games. <laughs> and I remember going to pick it up. I like vividly in my head. I remember the road. I could show you the road in real life that we drove home on. It's crazy. Like, like every console launch, I have a very vivid memory of what I was doing where I was in my life. And, and what's funny is this is the first generation where I didn't go to the store to buy a system. Like I ordered my PS5 and my Xbox Series X off of Amazon and Best Buy respectively. See, I keep that little magic still. I don't order from Amazon. I feel like there is some magic like having to wait till a store opens and so on. You know what makes me sad? You know what the last I one I did was? Anticipation. The last the last system launch I went to was the Wii U. Wii U. I was the oh. only one there. <laughs> oh, that one's yeah. <laughs> Literally the only person was, at the door when it opened. There was more people waiting for the day that Majora's mask on 3DS came out. <laughs> Dude, what just me. Ooh. Like I walked in, I was like, did I miss a midnight launch? And the guy's like, Nope, we didn't do a midnight launch. Like, okay. <laughs> it's so sad. The Wii U was sad. Yeah, it was. I had a lot of fun with it, though. That, that was when sad. I was. That was in. Oh my god. I had a. I had a. I had a game buying problem. I won't pretend that I. I don't still, but like, you know, I'm not buying full price games as they come out anymore. Um. <sighs> I remember I was spending probably the most money I'd ever spent on video games during that period. Boy, I did not buy a ton of Wii U stuff. Oh man, I had so many games. I, a lot of them got sent to me because I was I was reviewing stuff at that point. I think Midway sent a pack with all their games in it. Which yeah, think about that for a second. Um, Activision sent a pack of their games. I think the only games I had to buy buy were the Nintendo ones, which was just New Super Mario Brothers U. Which wasn't a big Bayonetta. deal because I'm gonna buy that anyway, you know. Bayonetta, like I have, I mean, I have most of the games anybody would actually want to play on Wii U. You got Devil's uh, Third, right? I said want to play, <laughs> not want to own. So my collection has something that's expensive in it. Mm. I mean, play. 
Um, so funny. You know, even even Star Fox, I have. I oh, bought, I yeah, bought that yeah. brand new. That's that's what I'm saying. Like I bought Star Fox Zero brand new because I was excited for anything that was coming out on Wii U. Um, I have um, uh, known criminal uh, Yuji Naka. Um, his uh, Ronan, Rodan, the Sky Soldier. Rodan, like yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, um, Rodea. Rodea, that's right, that's right. Rodea, the Sky Soldier. Um, I mean, I even have that on 3DS because I was buying. There wasn't a ton of 3DS releases at this point either. Um, I, like so, I have like stuff like Shantae, um, and the Pirate's Curse on 3DS. Like I bought everything. They just did not have the releases because I have way more from that time of like PS4 stuff. Oh yeah, the Wii U was, and most of the games that came out on it were like, why? Like, what was that? Batman Arkham Armor oh, Edition. Oh, Batman Arkham. We have we have games that you just played on, you know, Tech the and Tag that we didn't look like. Yeah, it was it was a bad it was a bad launch. There was a ton of games, but none of them were like, oh, I need to play that. It's weird. I don't know. It just yeah. makes me sad that the 360 store is closing. Um, I don't it know. makes me sad that like how devalued um, 360 games were, and then as soon as the store was closing, suddenly the prices shot up. Yeah, which is weird. Like that's just gross. It's the XBLA stuff that really bothers me because like it will not be available. Like somebody's already archived it, obviously. Yeah. But it's still not the same, man. I remember when they used to do one game a week and it was under 50 megabytes and all that crap. Like, I go, I went through all of that crap. And then what was it? Symphony of the Night was the game that broke the download size because everybody's like, well, we got to have Symphony of the Night. And it's It's got to be bigger than 50 megabytes. I, have, I mean, I have Symphony of the Night on 360. Oh, yeah. It's backwards compatible. Why, you can play it right why, now. Why wouldn't I? It's been. It's also been like $2. Multiple times. <laughs> it is, and what's funny is it's like not even the best version of a port of that game. Honestly, I still no, think the PS1 think version is still the best version. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, I know I sound contrarian, but I really like the version in Dracula X Chronicles on the PSP. Oh, yeah, on the PSP. Because that's got a bit of the um, Saturn content. And that, it's got a new translation. The the it's so that game is in such a weird place because there has to be some kind of contract with Sony because there's no excuse why that game's not on Switch. No excuse. Like that game is made the, for the, the Switch. The sad part is that you would you buy it? Absolutely. Yeah, that's me too. Yeah, like <laughs> I, but I'm a sad individual. But yeah, oh, I'd hundred percent buy. No, no, no. Sad individuals. <laughs> it, it's true. That's true. No, you put Symphony of the Night anywhere, I'll probably buy it. Like that's one of my top ten games of all time. Like I didn't even. So I played that game after playing. I fell in love with, um, uh, sorry, Aria of Sorrow. I want. I want to keep saying Dawn. That's the sequel. Yes. Um, I got the Castlevania, um, uh, double pack. So had Ari of Sorrow and uh, Harmony of Dissonance. Yes. Um, I love that double pack. And then I was like, oh, the DS game. So I have all the DS games. I have Circle of the Moon physically. These are all the games I went and bought because I liked Metroid. And then after playing those Castlevania games, I played Symphony of the Night. Holy shit. You went way backwards. Right, and funnily enough, Symphony of the Night is still really fucking good. Oh, that game is almost perfect. Like, and and the reason why I, the reason why I like the Dracula X Chronicles version, is because one, Dracula X Chronicles has um, Rondo of Blood in it, and they've translated everything, and the voice actors from Rondo of Blood are the same voice actors they use in the new translation. And yeah, it doesn't have the Mimi what is a man um, stuff in it, but um, I don't know. It was like, it felt like I was watching the more accurate version 
you know, for what you know, the purists like to say out there. <laughs> um, what do you hear? What, what they what it was what it was in J- Japan. Um, so I I just really enjoy what they did with that. And then there's more content in that version too because there's a new campaign where you play as Maria. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Which is a Saturn only exclusive thing, I think. Which is the only reason to buy the Saturn version because the Saturn version it sucks. sucks. <laughs> well, that and there's like another area, but the area is kind of shitty, so. Yeah, like that Saturn okay. version was such a fumble. Holy shit. That game is like $200. I know, it's crazy expensive, but it's the worst version of that game. But I mean, the worst. Okay, the worst version of Wonder Boy 3. Arguably, is the Turbo Graphics version, where they read it all the graphics, mm-hmm. but not. When I say read it all the graphics, they read it all the graphics, but then for the main character, they like redesigned the character too. Um, and the music's kind of off sounding in comparison to like the much nicer sounding Sega Master System. Um, it's a weird thing. Two hundred dollars. This is and why, I've, and I've thought about paying that price because I'm a big enough fan of that game. But I'm like, I don't know. I don't have a Turbo Graphics, so it's like, why would I do this? That that is a ridiculous of the collection aspect to me. Is is paying two hundred dollars for what is essentially like it didn't even cost that much when it came out, kind of thing. And it's like there is no cartridge in the world that is worth two hundred dollars to me. I, I I kind of forgive. I kind of forgive it for the consoles that kind of failed. Ah, even Which the Turbo Graphics arguably did, and say the same with the Sega Saturn. I'm not saying I love it, but at the same time, like if it gets a bigger fan base much later on than what it was at the time, there's only so many copies to go around. Yeah, but there's so many other ways to play it. Oh yeah, if so that's what like, you're interested in, you is go, playing it. If you want to play it, uh, go to AliExpress, look up the cartridge that i have i will oh god damn it i don't remember what it's called um i'm just saying if you actually just want to play these games there are much easier and cheaper ways sometimes free if you're uh, savvy um ways to play these games most of these games like there are some games you legitimately just cannot play anymore so there's so if you have a sega saturn you actually need the hardware for this there is a cartridge that you can buy off like aliexpress um, because it's open source, called a Saru. And you plug that into the cartridge slot uh, cartridge slot at the top of the console, and there's just a micro SD in it, and you can play all the games off of micro SD that you legally own. And I say that not as a joke about that, but because it'll actually allow you to skip um, the using an actual disc entirely. So you could put everything you own on a micro SD and then just plug in the cartridge and never have to worry about your laser going. Dude, I want to tell you something, speaking of AliExpress. So I got an email this week of somebody sending me something for review. At this point, what we're talking about, we're being able to play these old games, right? Somebody sent me an email. They're going to send me this for review. This is le- This is not legal. I don't think. Um, uh, but I'll put it in the chat. They're going to send me this to review. There ain't no way in hell that this should be real, right? I don't know. Hold on. I'm still loading. Um, like, what the hell? So, so here's the thing. So here's the thing. <laughs> this is my this is my issue with these. 16,000 games. Yeah. <laughs> so while you say that, but like, no, they actually do this. They actually do this now. Because it used to be like if you got like fake. Speaking of things that should not be legal, I bought a little handheld console knowing it was going to be junk for like $20. And it's like 500 plus games and they're all NES ROMs of some sort. Um, but they double up on some of them, you know? Oh, sure. There's, there's going to be like, doubles in these these the, things. Doubles in the sense that they're the same game. But it's not doubles in the sense that they're literally the same ROM. Like, yeah, they're different get, ROMs. Like, the PS1 version and the N64 version of certain games and stuff like that. 
But no, they actually come with this stuff. Is it legit? No, not at all. I don't know how the fuck is it, how it's okay. But do they work? Surprisingly, yes. Yeah, My like this thing, one, this thing has a weird. PS1, PSP, Dreamcast, N64, and Sega Saturn. So my my dad bought one it came with, it came with like a fake ass um dual sense oh, that's that's the that's the standard they put in there it's the and, and you and you just it's a it's just a thing hdmi that you plug it uh plug into the back and then just plug the power through usb yeah like a like a fire stick yeah and it has a bunch of emulators on it i was playing cuz i listen i didn't pay for it my dad handed it to me um he's looking for robotron because that's his that's the thing he always wants to play um they didn't like how it felt on this so they had a psp emulator and i was playing uh vice city stories it's i'm kind of impressed at like how small they can make these things yeah this thing looks like a beast if you look at the pictures like it's got like four triggers on the back of the damn thing Uh, hey you know what like in terms of tech, I'm impressed. Like, I'm buying it more for the tech at that point. They could not include the emulators for all I care. You know, I because I'm just I'm impressed with how they make this work. Like how strong these little handhelds are. Yeah, it's wild. Like I th- I guess this company also just put out, and you can buy this on Amazon, by the way. They just put out a 12 terabyte hard drive. That motherfucker has, what? like, Switch games on it. I mean, okay, that one, that one's bad. <laughs> that one I can't defend in the slightest. Like, how, how? How is this? How could you do this? I don't... I don't get it. So, okay, so I have kind of a story about stuff like that. <laughs> Although it's a scam. Don't Don't do this. But um, way before it was known as a scam, uh, I bought a like 124 gigabyte USB stick off of eBay. <laughs> and like it does, it does say that it's that size. It's not. Um, but yeah, like, you know, it's just welcome to the things that can get out of China. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Like they just pack all of these ROMs into this thing and it's like... But th- how is so so like the little handheld thing though? I even questioned that where I'm like, some of those games are like clearly not licensed to be in there. No, none of them are sold, sold in the store. <laughs> yeah, how like it's sold in brick and mortar stores. Yeah, like... I don't know how this stuff works. I don't know how certain websites get shut down, but then like people can just like straight up sell... like the websites that get shut down aren't even charge it. Yeah, I know. And these dudes are like selling shit. Like here's a here's a USB thumb drive with like all of the PS1 games on it. Like, excuse me. You will notice, and I've noticed this in certain, um, like even that little handheld, the 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 just that HDMI thing that my dad handed me. Um, they usually stay away from having too much Nintendo properties. Not the ones I see. Really? No. I dude, every NES game, every Super Nintendo, every GameCube, wow. like just everything. N sixty four is a complete set every time I see one of those things. Like, Jesus Christ. It's not even they don't even think about it. It's like, yep, here you go. I can't believe it. I can't believe that this like I literally can go on Amazon right now and buy every game that's ever existed before the PS4. That's the listing every game that's ever existed. Oh, on a on like a on hard drive. like on a ten terabyte hard drive, yeah. Like you just buy it on Amazon for like two hundred dollars or something, and mostly you're paying for the hard drive at that point. It's crazy. It's just straight up a hard drive. You plug it in, and it's like you double click in executable, and then it just loads up this thing. It's like here, play whatever. Like. It's like the um, the arcade sticks that you can buy too, that just plug into your television. Oh yeah, that have a bunch of ROMs on them. Yeah, and, 
and they're it's like filled with even like modern well modern ps4 stuff type of thing mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah what the fuck and it's like we we got to skirt around like this you know like almost all of us on the show emulate something and it's like well where do you get your stuff like well you can just go on amazon and buy it like don't ask me where to get stuff like it's right there Search I on. I go to terrible places and ruin ruin my browser history. <laughs> Just go to Amazon. Don't be like me. Like literally, let's, I'm gonna do this right now. We go to Amazon.com, and I type in 10 terabyte game drive. Okay, so that's just bringing up. Uh, nope, here we go. First one popped up. Uh, Ken Hank 12 terabyte external hard drive with 96,000 classic games. <laughs> two hundred and sixty nine ninety nine. <laughs> like dude Dude. It's got everything from Atari to Switch. This is fine. <laughs> yeah, this is on Amazon.com. This is not on uh, some like you know Oh my god. CD dark side of the web. <clears throat> area. There are 400 plus emulators, 96,000 games, 6,000 plus 3D games. Jesus Christ. The pictures are awesome. Like this picture right here, this is this is video games right here. Like, come on. Just a motorcycle with a with a generic PS4 controller and a hard yeah. drive. It's a fucking hard drive, wow. man. And I've watched a couple YouTube videos of people seeing what's on these things. You would be shocked what is on here. Like legitimately shocked. It's crazy. Yeah. And all I did was search Amazon for 10 terabyte game hard drive. That's all I, that's all I searched for. Anyway. Um, I guess I can run through some of the stuff I played. I can't talk about a couple of them. Um, one of them is not out till mid-August. So I'll talk about that another time. Uh, I did run through some indie stuff. Once again, like nothing stuck out to me. Uh, played Steel Racer, which reminds me a lot of, like, old Top Gear games. And there was also Super Woden GP2, which is, like, the old Neo Geo, like, isometric racing games. Uh, Retro Revengers, which is a weird 2D side-scroller with some really weird mechanics and some not-so-great jumping. Uh, Exophobia is a first-person shooter in, like, a Doom style, but it's all, like, pink and purple and... It was interesting, but a little clunky. Felt like it should have been... It felt like a Game Boy game where everything is super huge when you blow it up on a big 4K screen kind of thing. I don't know if I love that. <clears throat> yeah, I wasn't a big fan. Uh, Exhausted Man is one of those wobble game things, and I was just like, ah, I just immediately just turned it off. Um, Abathor is a, is a cool side-scroller. Kind of... I don't want to call it Golden Axe-like, but the characters are very Golden Axe-y. Um, but it is more of just like a straight side-scrolling action game. A uh, Conscript seems like something that would be pretty cool. It's, uh, it's a top-down pixel art um, survival horror game set during like World War II. Hold on, I'm looking it, I'm looking it up. Yeah, that game is kind of neat. Oh, oh yeah, this looks like a... Um... The, the graphics are not are, are much higher, but it reminds me of some like those weird Genesis sort of not wh whatever angle that is um, ortho orthogonal angle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Where you're like kind of run at all angles. Yes. Stuff. Well, the survival like, horror game the... set during World War Two. That's a cool concept. No, World War One. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, World War One. Oh, you don't get too many World War One games. No, because of the weaponry is not that exciting for video games. But it works for survival horror. Yes. Um, Fuck, that's pretty good. 
No, that that game was cool. Like that that game really kind of piqued my interest. How, how have I never heard of this? Dude, I didn't ever heard of it till like it showed up in my indie codes and I saw it and I was like, "Oh, it's a survival horror game." So I downloaded it. It's kind, like, of, kind of cool. Bit of And it's just cuz like some of the some of the screenshots I'm looking at kind of look surreal. Um so that sword and sorcery game. Sword and sorcery game. Swore. Sorcery. The the um Super Brothers or whatever game where it was like based off of the moon. I don't know what you're talking about. I might not just might not be thinking about it. And swore. It's it's you know the pixel art style you hate? Oh, the people. lanky one? Yeah. Yeah. This is the game that was like the first to do it. Oh. I think. Um Yeah, I really hate that pixel art style. Drives this, me crazy. This game. Let's see. Sword and Sorcery. I do not remember this game. It it kind of has a Zelda vibe. It huh. was kind of a rhythm game. That's weird. But it was also based off of the... So, it's got the sort of, like, the tone of one of those, like, um, uh, cinematic platformers. Like out of this world mm. and uh, flashback. That's that's how it kind of feels. Like it's very quiet and ambient. Um, you know, you're kind of interacting with puzzles in the, in the environment in this like platformer <clears throat> sort of look. Mm. Um, but then combat was a rhythm game. That's weird. Yeah, but like really fucking cool. Like the the st- This game oozed style, and then everybody was like, "All." Oh, I can do lanky characters too, because then I don't have to do a lot of detail. And it's like this one, it's like an artistic thing. All the creatures kind of follow this like new lanky style. Um, fuck, I, I I don't. I thought you knew about this game. No, I I don't think I've ever played this game. It it goes on sale quite often. If you see it, you should try it out. It's pretty fucking cool. Is it only um, Steam or is it anywhere else? No, I think it's on like everything. Okay. I think it might be free on like. Fucking, okay, Doc. Um, Thank you. Uh, Apple at some point, I'm sure. Oh, that's uh, weird. Switch, it's on. It's on Switch, Android, Windows, Mac OS, iPhone, iPad. Okay, I'll see if it's on. I'll keep an eye on that Deku site for Switch version. Oh fuck, man. Yeah, and and. You sort of have to progress the game by playing it on different days as it as your week goes through the cycles of the moon. That's pretty cool, that actually. Changes things in the game. Yeah, it, it's a really cool fucking game. The soundtrack's amazing. Um, it, it's sort of got that Zelda iconography, but it's got this really weird art style. I, I yeah, I'm surprised. I thought that was like a game that everybody kind of knew about. Yeah, it's it's like this is what I hate about indie games. Like, there's so many of them that the cool ones just very rarely ever. Like, there's a lot of cool stuff that nobody talks about. It's crazy. Hmm. Well, I guess Terrence finally joined us. Uh, yeah. Wow. Like, yeah, I say it like that. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. <clears throat> um, what is this? Super Brothers Sword and Swords. I think I played this, or I have it on my. F- phone or that's the thing is like there's there's so many games now it's like well did i fucking play this i don't remember shit i think i have uh because this this looks weird for me i don't i don't have it on pc i know that but it's either on my phone or it's on uh it's on switch but uh but yeah but yeah i'm here what y'all what y'all doing what are we doing what are we talking about what are we playing what are we talking yeah, about I'm, I'm the I'm... show off the rails to be honest with you yeah the show kind of is is oh, wild man. like we did like i love it we ranted for like 40 minutes now, like we're talking about, I'm going through what I played this week, I'm just running through, because I, I can't talk about a couple of the games I'm playing, so I'm talking about the indie games. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. For the first time ever, I finally played Seven Days to Die, because they sent a code over for it in my indie games. Yeah, that's not for me. No, that's 100%. It's not your type of game. My wife bought that on, um, it's wild too. I did not know that it wasn't like done. I didn't know it was a like a, a game preview version. She bought that in like 2016. It's still in game preview, playing. by the way. 
Yeah, well, this is. I think that's why they sent you the code. It's in one point one point oh now. Like it just launched. Dude, like it literally that. still says game preview on it. Oh, nice. They must not have updated the stuff, but yeah, because we got she got like an email and stuff for it and all of that. Like it's it's a whole big deal. All, like, all I know. Never yeah, it. all I know is I booted it up and it starts loading the world and it takes forever to like generate yeah. the world, and then like I get into it and it's like, oh, I look, I can punch a tree. I was like, oh no. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, it's basically Ark, but zombies. Like, it's... No, it's, thank it's, you. So, what she said... Yeah, it's like Fortnite was supposed to be when they announced it, where, like, you spend the day preparing, right? Like, so, building up encampments and, you know, foraging and all this other stuff. And then the night, you're defending because the zombies are coming to attack you. And then, you know, it cycles on. But then, like, you got to prepare for, like, some big... Horde comes on the seventh day or something like that. That's like the ultimate thing that you oh, like, gotta get or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's something like that. But I, I do know it has those like survival elements of, um, and then those kind of uh tower defense type stuff that like Fortnite was originally supposed to be when it was announced way back before it became this yeah, other thing. I'm good. Oh. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, it would. It's not your game. No, nah. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna check it out. I'm kind of curious. Uh, I, more so because I didn't realize it was it wasn't even done. I didn't realize it was in game preview this whole time. But yeah, uh, I revisited two games that I immediately got frustrated with this week. Uh, the first was No Man's Sky. Um, oh, the first was Overwatch too. No, <laughs> I just, I just keep playing that game. I just... Yeah, that's my point. Uh, <laughs> uh, fight you the pain. Take a salt tablet. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, I played No Man's Sky, and I like. I remember why I stopped playing this because the inventory just pisses me off. I'm like, oh my god, I'm scrolling through this, whatever. Yeah, I just want to fly so, around the galaxy and have fun, but no, nah. Yeah, I, I so Ryan, Ryan, I saw Ryan was like, well, I don't really feel like that, but you know, I feel you. Like it is, uh, it is a bit much, um, but for me, and it, because I'm just such a huge space fan, and that game is kind of like <clears> the old. <throat> space fantasy like hey, I, I deal with it but you can't you can upgrade those inventory slots you can buy ships that have bigger slots and they've added some wild stuff which i played it to probably more than you but i'll talk about it when i i should just play I creative play. mode and say fuck it and just actually you know what uh, so and i didn't even realize this i actually am like in creative mode and um it, it still gives me achievements and everything well, I don't care about the achievements. I just like I just I just don't want to deal with a lot of that shit. I got you. Well, so the only thing you have to deal with is like the inventory stuff. Oh, um, fuck. you can you you but but that's what I'm saying. You can adjust your like thing to where you don't need components to craft stuff. So you can max out your slots. You can you know you can give yourself a boost in money so you can buy a better ship because that's what I did actually. So I have like an A class ship. Um. And if you work with me, because I'm actually in the middle of the quest right now to get this living ship, um, because you got to do these Nexus quests to get the Quicksilver currency. And then, it's, and it's funny because Mariah was like, "I got to tell you, man, I don't know what any of that means." Like I went back and read for it. I was like, you know, this is a lot of weird words. Quicksilver, Nexus, like what the fuck? What what is what, what are we doing? Can here? I just land it's, on a planet with like big beady eyed <laughs> worms or some shit or something? That's what I want to do. Yeah, you can do that. You just you gotta you gotta upgrade your stuff. But but anyway, yeah, you you should mess with the accessibility stuff because you could make it a whole lot easier. Um, you just have to buy a ship. Just buy a ship that's you know that has more inventory space, and then it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, the other one I returned to was the first Descendant. Um, and like I couldn't even figure out how to start a mission. I was like, there's just way too many fucking icons on the screen. I have no idea what's happening right now. Yeah, it's a lot. It is um. A lot. I played a little bit of uh, Mortal Kombat 1. That game is buggy as fuck on Xbox One right now. Holy shit. Like, I don't even know how that's, like... Oof. How'd that get past CERT? Like, I was literally in a fight... I was I was going through the new season of Invasions, and I was like, oh, I'm having a good time, I'm having a good time. And then I hit one of those matches where it's like, the dude can one-shot you. I was like, why? <laughs> Who finds this Reflexes. fun? Some guy. I'm just like, and it's and it's a it's a, a mandatory mission you got to get through to go to the next level. I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. 
Why you took the cop? Nether realm, what are you doing? Um, and then I, I, you know, Terrence was dying for me to play Marvel Rivals, so I finally played Marvel Rivals. In the first match, I just fucking destroyed everybody because that game is Overwatch. Yep. Like I don't even have any ifs, ands, or buts about it. That game is Overwatch. Yeah, it is. It is Marvel Overwatch, hundred percent. Like if you played Overwatch and you go into this, what was that? Um, you, it's it's very easy. It's very comfortable. Um, I was the MVP. The play kind of thing. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. First match. Snow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know what the character did. <laughs> like, I just hopped in the game. Like, literally held them in spawn. Nice. Nice. Like, like I didn't... Like, what... Did, okay. Did you have a Venom? I bet you had a Venom on your team. Oh, uh, no, I had a Spider-Man. Well, okay. Yeah, Spider-Man is a good... I, I can't play as him. Um... He's he's very much akin to uh, Genji. Actually, Black Panther is pretty much Genji. Um, <clears throat> like, because you got to stay mobile as him um, to to get killed. So he's very squishy. But Spider Man is like that too. He just you know it does Spider Man stuff. But yeah. <laughs> okay, what'd you think though? All right, so yeah, it's Overwatch, nigga. Basically, but it's, think, I though? mean, it's fine. Okay, that's about I, what I expected. I, like yeah, I don't. Game. I'm not gonna play it. Most likely, like, why? Why would I? I mean, what is that? I. It's the most we got Overwatch at home shit I've ever played. Like it's literally like it's not even like trying to hide it. Like it's just it's Overwatch. You're right. It I, it is. It I don't is. like the. I, I don't it, think the map design is as good. Like the maps feel. Um, tight and chaotic and I'm just like there's too much visual vomit on the screen at times and not even when like ultimates are going on which is crazy um I don't know like the abilities don't feel as good as Overwatch like it literally feels like it, like somebody was like you got an assignment from somebody and they're like make me Overwatch for like a quarter of the money like that's that's what I, that's the best way I can describe it, which is weird because it probably costs more than fucking Overwatch to make. It feels like yeah. one of those Chinese games, like those knockoff um, hero shooters or MMOs or whatever. I uh, okay. I can't tell like in what context you mean that, like in a bad way, because this game is good. Like it's. Well, you know what, though? Because you didn't even think Concord. You didn't even give Concord the fact that it was solid. So you mean in a bad way. No, no, no. Concord is... Here's the difference. Concord (laughs) feels like an expensive game. It feels like... My problem with Concord is that the, the, the abilities didn't really interest me. The characters didn't interest me. And I thought the time to kill was way too high. Um, With Marvel... It... It... Feels like a plastic Overwatch. I don't know how to describe it better than that. Like the mechanics are the same, but they feel cheap. I got you. I, I got you. Like the impact really... doesn't feel as good. Like the shooting doesn't feel as good. The movement doesn't feel as good. Like the abilities don't interact with each other as good, even though they are very mm. similar. Okay. Really wish somebody in our group could play this game and it, I, it's a shame i don't have a steam code for jay to play it and I, I i don't know i need someone to play it that is uh, that can be objective because you are <laughs> you are one and i love you to death man i do but you are biased as fuck when it comes to overwatch and that's fine that's your game i expect that like everything you said was like when niggas give like backhanded compliments to people, yeah, you good, but you're know, not as good as this. Like, come on, nigga. Look, you look. They flowers. Like I'm, that game <clears> is good. 
like I and, I and I'm telling you this, and you can call me a simp. Matter of fact, you can call me a simp all fucking day. Everybody on this podcast can. But I, the the thing I love about this, and and again, this is 100% me, and I'm not trying to sell nobody. And I even told you, I I looked at this or I thought it could be for you an escape from Overwatch when Overwatch got on your nerves. Like you're like, oh my god, fuck this comp. So you get on Marvel and you just fucking have some fun because it's similar enough. And I know you fuck with Marvel, maybe not as hard as I do, but you do fuck with them characters. So you can find like, oh, man, fuck, I like Thor or oh, shit, I like, you know, Spider-Man or whatever. But I, I, for me, this game is like you said, it is definitely somebody was like, hey, you know, copy this, but make it not as similar. It, it's Overwatch, but it's Marvel Overwatch. The, the fact that it's Marvel is what the draw is to me. So I feel like for me, this this very well could possibly, and I, I don't know, we'll see if it lasts this long, could be for me what Overwatch is for you and just be that game. Like, but I, cause like all the stuff that you kind of knocking it for, I'm like, damn, I feel like I like it for that. Like, I think it's similar to Overwatch, but with Marvel stuff, like the map design, the maps you feel are uh, small or whatever else. Okay, I give you that, but the maps in this can also be destroyed, and if you play it right, they can be tactically used. So you got like a, a, sti a Punisher who's up on this bridge, who maybe he didn't realize that you could destroy that, now you done knocked him down, he no longer has a vantage point, you dropped him on your Scarlet Witch, who's finishing him off. So, the map design stuff, the thought behind it is very different than what it is for Overwatch, too. So it's just, it's just, I don't know. I, I, I just feel like <clears throat> I'm giving it more of an objective shake than you, which I expected because you're an Overwatch fan. And I'm not saying it in a, in a, in a bad way at all. Please don't take it as that because I'm not like at all. Because you'll, I mean, I'm sure you can admit that's your game. Like you tell us all the time. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. Well, I, know, I know I have an abusive relationship. But I just don't want you. Yeah, but I just don't want you to be like to 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 knock it to the point where niggas is like you was like man yeah just feel like it just feel like one of those Chinese knockoff games. Well, hold on, player, this ain't like you know Power Watch. You know what I mean? Like it, I it, mean it kind of is. It's just called Marvel Watch. It's like, called Marvel Watch. Really slapping it in the dick. Like come on, homie, come on now, don't do that. This game is fucking solid. <laughs> like it definitely is solid. And I wish Anthony could get on here because I know Anthony fuck with comics. Anthony, <laughs> you probably would dig this. Like, man, I wish I had to pay. I would buy you a fucking Xbox player. Like, I I think you would fuck with this. But but yeah, like, come on, kid. <laughs> I'm just you wanted my opinion Holy as somebody shit. who plays Overwatch to, to oh. play the Overwatch clone. And okay, I will say this one thing. If you're gonna come into King, you better knock the King down. That's all I'm saying. And you're you're right. You're right. And I, I don't think and, and, and you're absolutely <laughs> you're absolutely right with that. I don't think it's gonna I don't think it's gonna dethrone Overwatch, but to be fair, I don't think, you know, anything is gonna dethrone Overwatch. Just like I don't think anything is gonna dethrone World of Warcraft. Now Final Fantasy is a very close second, is right there. I feel like if they invest and do this Marvel right, there's enough differences, but enough similarities that it could be right there with this Overwatch. They may not need to knock them off, but they could be like, hey, we're doing some kind of stuff because it's, it's way better than Paladins has ever been. Oh, it's 100% better Paladins. than Paladins. Paladins. Paladins was trash. I'm sorry. That game was trash. See, and I actually, I I liked it because it was different from Overwatch. It was, and that is a script. It was, yeah. like I said, it was it was that game that we would go to when we got frustrated with Overwatch. Because, and you said, like, I am I am an Overwatch fan. Like, I fucked with that game since launch. I bought my kids uh, Xboxes. I had my whole fucking house playing that. Like, we had game nights. Like, we had a whole squad. They made friends with school that played it. Uh, my girl, Elisa, was the best Mercy I ever seen. Like, it, fuck it, we was crazy about Overwatch. And then when we got frustrated, we would go to Paladins. So I feel like, I, I hoped Marvel would be that for you. But I really, I need to get Anthony on here. I feel like Anthony might mess with it. Because he liked Overwatch, but he was kind of frustrated. But this got the 6v6. And I know he messed with the comic book characters. He might, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So. <laughs> okay, I'm glad. So, I'm glad um, you love it. I. I am. That was. You. That was uh, passionate. Um. He's. I told you he's a simp. That's what we're doing here. Yeah, wow. Well, okay. Right, right. I'm gonna rock you. I'm just oh, I'm a simp, man. I'm about to. I'm, I'm gonna get a tattoo. Shit. Whatever. 
I ain't gonna do all of that. I swear. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Anthony. What you about to say? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that that's what I've been playing. Now, I also have to tell you that I've been playing all this, and Anthony's going to let out this humongous groan. But I've been playing all this on a brand new TV. Oh, oh mm. no. no. I didn't buy it. I, didn't I was buy like, it. oh, surely yeah, it can't be that bad. No, you're correct. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't buy it, Anthony. It was sent to me for review. Oh, shoot, that's funny. So, did, oh, did they reach out to you, Ken? Did they reach out to me? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> say, no. First of all, the fact the fact that you had to repeat it that meant no right there. Like I was like, oh no, nah, nigga, you already fucked up. The fact that you repeated the question, no. Nah, oh, you had to do it like that. Right. You should be like, oh yeah, they did. Sure did. Send me an email because they were so impressed with the last one that I did. <laughs> no, they they so this TCL sent me their new uh 2024 high end model. It's really good. It's really, really, really good, and it's like half the price of an OLED. Yeah, it's the sixty-five. Uh, was a, sta- a thousand. Mm-hmm. I was looking. I was like, oh man, because you was talking about all the features and stuff. I was like, mm, might I have, have a TV in the bedroom. Like this TV is bright as fuck. It's got one hundred forty-four hertz. It's got a frame counter that works. Like I was using it last night when I was playing Starfield, and it's like literally. Oh, nice. Update in real time. Like this TV has everything except for two, except for four HDMI 2.1s. But let's be fair, there's only two things that you really need 2.1 for. So true. Yeah. You you probably don't need four. Although I'd like to have them anyway. But still. Uh, the only thing that's one of the only things I don't like. The other thing I don't like is I'm not a big fan of the Google. Uh, let me rephrase this. I'm not a fan of any like built-in back-end system in TVs, but, like, I don't care for Google TV. Like, I tried it a little bit. It's not it's not great. Are, are they not Roku anymore? No, they stopped doing Roku. They started doing Google TV. Oh, okay. Because so. the ones, I, I guess, yeah, the last one I bought from them, they were still doing Oh, yeah, we have a 2023 model in the living room that still uses Roku. So, like, this is okay. a new oh, thing. It's new, new. Okay, got you. Got yeah, you. Okay. I think they did a split last year where they had one of each, and then this year it's all Google. So, mm. um, okay. I have to say that I'm super impressed that the black levels are damn near OLED levels. Like, I know people think I'm crazy, but, dude, like, literally, like, they look black. Like, that's good. It's it's crazy how good they look, and the picture is crisp. Um, it does not upscale old content as well. The stuff that's in like 1080p still looks a little fuzzy, and if you go lower than that, then it's gonna be real fuzzy. But other than that, I've been super impressed. I'm gonna spend another week, week and a half with it, and then write up my review. But right now, my OLED is in a box. I'm just gonna say that. I, I said. Does he um? Wow, man, I forgot my question. Never mind. Go yeah, ahead. I literally put the, the, the C3 in a box and mounted this on the wall. Part of it was that the C3 I had was a 55 and this is a 65. So, like, my eyes are being blown out right now by a much bigger TV. And listen, I love a big TV. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm at a 77 is where I, I think that's my cap, though, because I, I don't think... See, 77 in my small area would be too much. Actually, yeah, yeah, because like I moved my space to a area, but like the way mine is set up, it fits right. Because yeah, you had yeah, in yours it would be too much. I think I'm right. literally yeah, maybe six to seven feet away from the TV in my recliner, so yeah, I don't think like five. 65 is already like I'm gonna tell you this. I was hitting some extra shots in Overwatch because my cursor was so much bigger now. <laughs> nice. But yeah. Oh, the, that was my question. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you turn on the HDR? Did you mess with the HDR? Dude, the HDR looks amazing. So you actually use it then? Yeah. Okay. So okay. That that's that's one of the things I'm gonna talk about in my review. So on the C3, when I would go into like HDR, like it would wash the picture out and make it real dim. Mm-hmm. On yeah. this one, no, 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 no. It's bright as fuck. And here's the other thing: if you ever use game mode on an OLED. You know how it like washes that shit out? Yep. It don't do that yep. here. Oh man. Like on game mode, okay. my shit is bright and vibrant and like the colors pop. 
Now, if you let me let me back up for a second. If you're one of those dudes that like tweaks your TV to be dark and lifeless and call it accurate, you're not gonna like this TV. No, no, I like bright pops, man. I like vivid <laughs> colors. What you I'm, know what I'm talking about, though. Have a car world. Yeah, I do. I know because I. De- <laughs> you follow like their guide to set your TV up, and then you look at it, and you're like, "What the fuck is this?" Yep. This is warm like, 25 and you're like what is oh my god <laughs> this is a hobby that needs an actual name it, i'm pretty sure it has a name i just don't know what it is like clearly if there's people making videos of how to set your tv up properly that's a hobby it's a it's like audio files yeah video uh, files audio files i guess i guess yeah. video file yeah Whoa. yep like i follow these dudes like like I tried that in the past, like when I first got NOLED, they're like, put these settings here and these settings here. Same. And like I followed it yep. to the T and then I turned on like a, a like a good movie. And that shit is so dark and like yep. like it's so it looks like somebody pissed on the screen. <laughs> yep. I did not like it because they tell you to do that super warm and, and all that. Because it, it was a Asian gentleman is the one that I was directed to. I oh, Vincent Teo probably. Name, he, yeah. Is it okay? I know he's super popular. Yeah. Um, and, and he does it, but yeah, I follow his stuff, and I was like, "Ooh, no, this is not for me, brother." I no, this no, is not for me. <laughs> like I, I'm to the point now where like I tweak it myself, and like I'm yep. not, I'm not gonna lie, I spent probably five or six hours tweaking it this weekend, like getting it exactly where I wanted, mm-hmm. and man, it pops. Like the 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 colors jump out in my face, like and it's bright as fuck. Like if you if you uh, put on a title screen that's like all white. Like I had to squint my eyes. I was like, I need to turn the brightness down. God damn. Oh, what? see, yeah, that's what I want. Okay, yeah, okay. This fucking TV. This. this fucking TV puts out five thousand nits, which is like way too much. Jesus. Yeah. Like my OLED was like eight hundred. This is five thousand. This is the Man, conversation I... that you would hear in like a sort of not so funny part of the Simpsons to set up the joke of then Sim- like Homer bringing home a TV that like gives them radiation poisoning. <laughs> Dude, I felt I felt it. Like even my son, like he he was he helped me. Yeah, I got a son old enough now he can help me mount a TV, which is awesome. I was thinking more of like your yeah, son man, you awesome. turn it on and like a high pitched sound plays that Dude, only children can hear. <laughs> we booted up I booted up something and like the title screen was white. And like I look, like I had turned my head because like, God damn, it's too bright. I look over at him. He's like, that's too bright. Right. Come on, some sunglasses. Yeah. Oh. I need sunglasses to watch this TV. It's that bright. But I love it. it that's crazy. That's yeah. I'm gonna look at these because uh, that's that's good to hear. I can't believe I how wonder... cheap it is. Like when I saw, like it, like it didn't launch for that. Like I think it's main, like it's retail price is like two, like seventeen hundred or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it's like a thousand right now, and I'm like, dude, a thousand dollars for this 65 inch TV? Fuck yeah, I'd buy that. Oh yeah, I might try to. Uh, I'm gonna have to box up my uh, my OLED. You know what's crazy? Do you know what? Do you know what the biggest size of this TV is? This model. What is it? 115 inches. Oh um, no, I don't. Dude, you can't afford it. Have... Nobody can afford it. It's like twenty six thousand okay, dollars. Oh my god, no. No. It's the largest that's... consumer TV ever built. Like, I watched a couple of videos on it. I'm just like, dude, that thing is taller consumer than I am. With, like, hard quotations. <laughs> that, right. <laughs> yeah, hard quotations. Like, that is crazy. Yeah, 115 yeah, inches. Now. My yeah. God! A thing big, right? <laughs> I, that is insane. Oh, they don't have a 77 inch. They got a 75. Yeah, it's all fives. Like I think the smallest version is the sixty-five of this model. So I think it's like sixty-five, gotcha. seventy-five, eighty-five, and ninety-five, and one hundred and fifteen. I think those are the sizes. This that is, is it's a fucking wild, crazy good TV. Man, that yeah, it's good to hear though. All right. And I think that's I think that's it. Yeah, Jesus Christ, we've been going on for a while, haven't we? Well, why don't you, why don't you, Terrence, why don't you tell us what you've been playing? Um, okay, I'm, I guess I'll rattle off since this y'all been going. I apologize for my lateness. So I already talked about Marvel Rivals. We we talked about that. I I enjoy that quite a bit. It's only in um closed beta right now, and it doesn't have a release date yet. Yet, um, but I think they're hoping for um end of the year. You know what's you know what's um, crazy? Not to sidetrack or anything, but like Valorant just fucking showed up in Game Pass yesterday. Did you see that? 
Yeah, I I so I thought that because I had been I had already played. I thought it was out, but I guess that it that was its beta or whatever, and now it's in open beta or whatever. Yeah, it just yeah, like showed up on up. Game Pass. I was mm-hmm. like, holy fuck. Okay, I, I'm not gonna download yeah. it because it's got that buy shit, but whatever. Yeah, you. Yeah, no, you. Yeah, because if you don't, if you if you don't like that, then not. Because you gotta buy every every round too. Um, nah. it's, I mean, it's basically freaking Counter Strike with yeah, powers. Yeah, like it, Valorant is. is Counter Strike and Overwatch is Team Fortress. That's just. Yep. That's what it is. <laughs> Everybody pulls. A, man, who's pulling Portal? Oh, <laughs> Splitgate. <laughs> yeah, Splitgate. Uh, Splitgate. Forgot about that. Yeah. Wow. Everybody pulls from Valve. <clears throat> it's of course they do. Like what? Uh, well, then Valve. What was it? Dota was built off of a Warcraft mod, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yes. That's what I, yeah, yep. it's crazy. Yes, it Defense was. of the Ancients. So that's the one that Valve yep. stole from Blizzard. So you know, mm-hmm. game respect um, game. Mm. Okay, so yeah, uh, Marvel Rivals is 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 cool. It's Overwatch with Marvel characters. Um, I hang on a second. I'm sorry. I'm pulling up my list. I, I apologize. I, I had to pull it up. I hit the wrong button. Okay. Um, I can't talk about that, but I'll have a review for two games this week. Um, I'll talk about them next week, which we'll be able to read the review this week. Yeah, I had um, two I couldn't talk about, too. Gotcha. Uh, I played some multiverses. I, I, I know we dunked on that game when it came out, rightfully so, um, but they seem to be right in the ship. I don't know if if they'll you know continue, but it's it's solid. Am I going to invest all my time? No, no, I'm not. But even as like a kind of a part timer, I'm I'm able to move through the the battle pass and stuff. Because if you pay the money, um, you have like the the premium battle pass tokens, and you get have at least I had like seven characters um unlocked things. So like I was able to buy Samurai Jack and um Smith and somebody else. Who's I forget how many player? fucking tokens I have because they sent me the. The Big Daddy version when it came out. That's what I bought. So yeah, you got you probably got seven too. If you bought if you had if you bought basically you have more than enough to afford everybody that's out right now and still buy the next um you know handful of heroes like before you actually have to spend some real money. Um, I will never so, yeah, spend can, real money. You can get on there. Yeah, me either. So yeah, you could get on there and and try out you know Samurai Jack or or whoever you might be curious about. But it it's actually it, it plays more like it did when it first came out, which is nice. So I guess they fixed kind of the weird um, speed issue. Um, and and it just flat out performs better. So it performs like it did before they took it away. Um, so there, there isn't a lot of rubber banding and uh, a whole lot of lag issues and everything. And they just dropped with this season, like the ranked mode. So there actually is a, a ranked, um, competitive tier, uh, one V one and two V two. So they do have one V one in there as well. Uh, and I think Beetlejuice is supposed to drop later, uh, this season in some way, shape or form. I'm not, I'm not trying to be critical, but what the fuck did they take it away for? Brother, dude, things. nobody knows. What were you doing in that time frame where you're like, yeah, actually, the game should be slower and more zoomed in? Mm hmm. Yeah. I, How did you no get one there? Knows. Like, I don't get it. No one knows. Like, I don't understand. Because, yeah, it, it, everybody, like, ragged on it for all of that with the zoomed in. Because, yeah, I forgot. They fixed that, too. Like, it's it's not as zoomed in. Um, Even in the uh, 1v1 matches, which is which is nice. It It's a relatively good distance. Um. But yeah, I, I don't understand. I don't understand what their what their thinking was. But I mean, it's a, it's the greatest better. it's the greatest crime in history. They took like hundreds of dollars from people and then they shut it down. Yeah, but <laughs> we just let it happen. Yeah, and now you're still playing it, so you know you're part of the problem. I I, I am. I, it's fine. I listen. I, the, the youth can change it. They they got it. The youths. They it. Yeah, they they got it. Um. I picked up because Anthony was talking about this last week, uh, and it was on a sale. Um, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist um, leak evolution, the the game on Xbox. Um, did you get your Did you get your copy? Did that? Hello. Who are you talking to? Yeah, I still have to play, Anthony. Oh. oh, okay, cool, cool. cool. <laughs> it's like okay, a Yu-Gi-Oh! Nah, Yu-Gi-Oh! I went to sleep. I don't know what you're talking. Oh, about. nigga, I know you ain't. Nah, yeah, I know you ain't playing. I know you ain't playing. <laughs> um, but uh. But yeah, that is um 
I, I like that a lot. So it, and he and you, you were absolutely right. It goes through all of the series. And I tell you what, the last like three of the the list of series that's on there, like the arcs, I have no idea of that who man. Those same. Are. I think I. <laughs> I think 4Ds or whatever it was, the the motorcycle yep. one was the last one I knew about. That's the last one that I know about, and I only vaguely know some stuff about that. Like I never really watched it, but like I was like, yeah, I don't know any Did of this. Did you say four four Ds? Yeah, the uh, yeah. first do something about it because it's. Uh, I think. Hold on. Four Ds nuts. I think it's referring to part of the. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Just dip it. Oh no, it's Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. 5Ds nuts. That's more, oh. that's more Ds. <laughs> oh, oh, that's because yeah, that's the dual the dual runners. Oh, D wheels. Yeah. They use those D wheels to duel or whatever. These wheels nuts. Oh my god. Anyways, yeah. yeah it, it, I didn't it, watch any of that. No, um, me neither. And, <laughs> So the the first thing that I immediately noticed when I played this, um, and I'm I'm almost done, y'all. I know y'all like, man, shut the fuck up. I'm almost done. Because uh, I know you talked about how if you watch the anime of Yu-Gi-Oh and try to play the card game, you you're gonna have a bad time because I did not like the show. And I played Joey's uh match where he used the Time Wizard and the Baby Dragon, <laughs> and I'm like, huh. This card doesn't do anything that it was doing in the show. My dragon yeah. doesn't magically age up. I need polarization for this to work. Yeah. Yeah, it shows you how much bullshit the anime put on you. Yeah. It's the heart of the cards because, like, man, when I was playing, as, uh, what is it, Yugi versus Kaiba, right? That's the first one. Yeah. Uh, yep. Where you can get Exodia. Yep. Yeah, that was cool. That was super cool. Let me tell you, <laughs> could not get Exodia for the life of me. Um, maybe I eventually did, but yeah, like I would get close and then he'd murder me. Um, however, when I played as Kaiba, boy, did, did Yugi draw fucking Exodia a lot of times and end the match. That's a fucking shame. Horse shit, I... but I. I I do like playing the reverse matches because it shows you how hard some of these fucking wins are. See, I'm that's actually one of the things that I'm excited to go back and do because I'm just going through them right now. Like I, I was going to start at the bottom because I don't know how to play those. Like I, and I, it was like late, and I was like, oh well, you know what? I'll check out this one. And it was like, hey, let me show you how to link evolution in the in like the game mat came up and it was fucking different and i was like nope i'm not gonna be able to do this tonight i'm gonna have to wait to pay attention because oh my god that, that the whole game must play different once you get to like the later ones um but yeah I'm, I'm i'm excited to go back and play the reverse duels um like the plan is weevil and and stuff like that like yeah um, and I, like, the, there's a lot of matches. Like I was scrolling through, like the yeah, locks was it, like they must go through the whole you're, thing. You're still thinking of Yu-Gi-Oh as arcs right now. Like, yeah, the only section that, like, all the arcs of Yu-Gi-Oh are in Yu-Gi-Oh, and then you know Yu-Gi-Oh GX is its own separate right playlist. I got you. Yeah, it's crazy how much don't forget they, they 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 have that weird season where it's all like in VR thing. Yep. Yep. Oh my that, god. That so yeah, I'm <laughs> But yeah, I'm 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 happy you said something about that and happy I caught that sale because I mean yeah, ten bucks. It's like forty dollar game too. Which I mean, honestly, yeah, this is worth forty dollars, especially if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh fan. Um and this will allow me to get my fix and, you know, learn how to play the, the new stuff and I might actually play that PvP one that they have out. Um I too played some No Man's Sky. It's uh, it's a good time. I found a Trump Vance planet on my travels. For the, their uh, couches. Oh, oh, their fungal planet is what it, their fungal storm is. That Trump Vance 2024 fungal storm is what they I named think, the planet. You know, at first when you posted that, I went, "Oh no, that's that's either somebody making like a terrible piece of shit uh, troll web uh, troll planet, or like it's legitimate." Which is more concerning, 
But now that you say it's a fungal planet, I think that may have been named it for a reason to say. I think something. it was. Yes, I think it was because yeah, it's because when I went back and looked at it, it that's yeah, it is fungal storm is the end of it. it is the Trump Vance twenty twenty four fungal storm is the name of the planet, and I was like, huh, okay, all right, we're already just naming planets. That's that's crazy. Um. But yeah, I, I enjoy that game as a as a space fan, and it is absolutely different. Um, I landed on some of these some of these planets, and to see creatures, and I think I took a picture. Like, there's, I shit you not, it was a fucking teddy bear with a lizard skin that was flying, and I was like, what the hell? Like, I was afraid. It was nice. They didn't try to eat me. Like, I scanned it and made some money, but like the creatures actually aren't just weird blobs and stuff now they actually resemble i saw a vine creature like it was literally made of vines um but like no insides or anything just you know arms legs walking on fours just just made of vines walking around i'm like oh okay yes it's some wild stuff in no man's sky so um, there's a bunch of planets are rejected peter molyneux black and white creatures yeah yeah, you know what? I, speaking of, I, that's one of the things that I actually played. Um, I, I found it on the Abandonware site because I remember I played that back in the day, and it's so funny because I, I, I built a computer to run Black and White too when it first came out, and like you know, I I didn't have a whole lot of money, so it could like barely run it. Um, and so now I'm playing it. My computer blows it out of the water but like i was playing black and white too and i that game is crazy and it still holds up like i i did i kind of i like the god genre of games I god damn it i'd said black and white i meant spore <laughs> <laughs> that's all right i played that too so yeah that that holds up as well like i got to the point where i'm on land like i evolved to to land a land creature and i designed my thing and then i and i stopped playing but i because i apparently with the EA, um, uh, well, I guess with uh, just Game Pass, but you know you have the EA stuff, but you have access to their uh, PC games that's on there. So like the Sims and like um, the uh, Wing Commander Three was on there. Like it was like some it was some crazy deep cuts. Like all the Command and Conquer games. I was like, oh shit. But anyways, um, <sighs> that's that's pretty much all I played. I'll, I'll wrap it up because I this is getting this is getting long. Um, that's, yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it that I can talk about currently. Okay. All right. Well, we'll talk about what's out this week. Um, Xbox, Series X, PlayStation 5, uh, we've got Dead Link, uh, Grounded, Fully Yoked Edition, The Roots of Paca, or Pacha, however you want to pronounce it. Oh, is that this week? That's this I week. I want that on Xbox, okay. Uh, Airport Sim, Beastie Bay DX, Forest Camp Story, Mars 2120, Curiosity with a Q, uh, Star Wars Bounty Hunter, Arrow the Acrobat Collection, uh, Sila. I mean, you know, like, mm, Sunsoft, you know. If we, if we get a code... That's what you said about EDF. I forgot to talk about EDF. God damn it. Wait, I would have taken it. Why? It you acted oh, no. like you didn't want it. No, I I thought Terrence wanted it. No, he said... Oh, no, 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 no. I was just going to join you. Cause oh, man. Okay. I'll try, to, I'll try to I'll try to get you in. I talked to, like, talk to my dude. I'll try to get you one. Okay. Like, he said they might have some more this week. I'll try to get you one. Okay, yeah. Please do. Because... That wasn't, it was just more of like, when you asked me that, I was like, well, you know what, like right now is not on my mind and Terrence seemed to have interest in it. So like, give, give it to Terrence if he wants it. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not really, I'm just interested in the way that it's kind of like, you know. Um, Man, you know, I'm sorry. Like, I played that game. Whatever. Like, I don't. Mm. Yeah, is it, is it well, great? Well, I mean, from, from what Terrence said, it hasn't been getting great reviews. So I'm, I'm curious to know why but did you like any of the other games oh i love those games but at this point so, yeah like, it's hmm. the same game oh yeah but have you played the last couple i mean yeah this is like the old ones 
But like it's literally like like I'm not even talking like everything, dude. Visually, it's the it, same as four, isn't it? Yeah, and it has exactly the same yeah. four classes. It has the exact same yeah. loop. Yeah, well, that's what I felt about EDF five. That, that's what this is. This this I like if you put them side by side, I couldn't tell you which one was which. Damn. Yeah. So wait, what's the best one then? Like, what's the? I best? mean, just pick one. Right. So, so there's like, mm, I, no, it's not just pick one. Yeah, uh, I know you're more nuanced than I am, but still, like they're they're Insect- they're like the same shit, man. Insect Armageddon is the one that's American made, and it kind of shows. So like, it's not as good. It's just not. Um, I like the the chibi one that was out a while ago. That one was. I'll get to that. I'll yeah, I was just saying what the, I like. God damn it! The, Let the, him cook. Get the Let PS2 versions, because. Okay. I mean, the games run poorly enough as it is. <laughs> Don't need to make it worse. Um, uh, EDF, uh, was it 2011? Is that the, the number? 299? Whatever. The three Xbox wow. 360 game. Okay. That is, that is a must play. Um, because it is styled like an old 60s sci-fi movie. <sighs> That sounds cool. It's yeah. backwards all the, compatible all the robots too. Look. Yeah, I own two of them on the from the 360 era because I got them on. So it's probably Insect Game Armageddon and and what? Uh, 2099. I'm pretty sure is what it is. EDF 2000. Of course, it's not. I type it to my. This is good rating. 2017. Sorry, it's EDF 2017. That's the 360 game. Um. That's that's the must play. Insect Armageddon skippable. Four, five, and apparently six are basically the same game. It has a more of an anime aesthetic. It also crashed uh, my PlayStation, by the way. Wow. Damn. Okay. I was running through the city and jumped, and like it just froze. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And then it um, crashed, and it gave me like a report that I could send to PlayStation. I was like, okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had that happen. That was on the third game, mission. Like, I was on the third those mission. Games hit like the slowdown. Oh boy, do they ever! But yeah, um, I think honestly, if you're gonna ask me which one's like the best out of all of them, it, it is probably 2017 because it's like the purest form because it doesn't feel like they were trying to be funny; it just happened to be funny. Um, but I do like Iron Rain a lot. That one feels like a, that one feels like you're fighting giant monsters. Like that feels more like a game. Um, World Brothers, which is the chibi sort of pic, uh, cubic pixel art um, style. That one, outside of the maybe um, racial stereotypes, uh, <laughs> is really good as well. Um, I, I really that like that one. Voxel, sequel, back to Voxel. Yeah, that yeah, one just got I a sequel. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I didn't. I don't know how to feel about the the clearly Mexican character wearing a sombrero, going, "I'm so sleepy." <laughs> that that was a, literally a thing in that game. Oh my god! Doesn't Mario do that now. in Mario Odyssey? Doesn't he fall asleep? Ma- Mario, might I remind you, is not Mexican. No, I, but in the, he wears know. the sombrero and the poncho in Odyssey. Remember, doesn't yes. he fall asleep? You can, well, he can fall asleep anywhere. Oh, okay. Um, wait. Also, so I own. I have Earth Defense Force twenty twenty five and Insect Armageddon. So, so twenty twenty five is Earth Defense Force four. It's just oh. for the. It's just for the old consoles. If you find Earth Defense Force four point one on PS four, it's just a version that runs slightly better. Okay. And then EDF five is just a version that runs slightly better, essentially. And apparently yeah. EDF six is not a version that runs better. <laughs> well, I mean, if frame rate rise, it's fine, but then it crashed. So, you know. so both of those are. Was it bad. worth it then? Man, yeah. I shot this big frog with a rocket launcher, so I had a good time. The Vita games actually are pretty good um, translations of the P- two PS two games, which I think one of them is actually twenty seventeen. I think the first one. I have both of those physically because I'm an EDF nerd. But all right, yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't loved four and five. So <laughs> I mean, probably not gonna like six then. Like, okay. 
Uh, closer the distance and the mortuary assistant. So, PlayStation also has Bitmap Bureau Collection, Mercenaries Lament, Requiem of the Silver Wolf, whatever the fuck that is. Uh, thank goodness you're here. And Tomba. I'm very excited for thank goodness you're here. And Tomba. Yeah, Tomba is out this week. Only on Switch and PlayStation. Exclusively. Not on Xbox. Um, PlayStation 4. Nothing there. And then Xbox One. Tensei. And Sugar Tanks 2. Been waiting on Sugar- the sequel oh, okay. to that. Well, right. Sugar Tanks 2, huh? Sugar Tanks 2. Uh, Nintendo, uh, <laughs> Nintendo Switch. Uh, we've got in uh, Basketball Anime Girls. I guess of course we do. Uh, of course. Inflatables. Thief Simulator. Heist Master. Urban Survival Simulator. The Bum's Journey. Uh, Little Army. The Garden Path. Death Noodle Delivery. Jalico Famicom version Pinball Quest. Boy, that's a title. Sorry, what was that? Jalico Famicom lot. version Pinball Quest. I'm just assuming yeah. that's a Jalico pinball game from the NES. Uh, Summer Intrigue. Ooh, that's fancy. Uh, Bear Butt Boxing. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay, hold on. I, I do know this game. Um, it is uh, Jalico, Famicom, blah, 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 blah. Um, what it is is it's like an RPG that's a pinball game. Yeah, that's from, probably from the NES Famicom days. Yep, and you yeah. go up screen by screen. And then, you know, if you, you don't really lose, you just kind of fall back screens. Yeah, well, that makes sense. I'm actually excited. Uh, I thought you got excited about bare butt boxing. I thought you were excited. No, about. still trying no, to no, figure no. that out. I mean, it's what? right there in the title. I don't. I I can guarantee you, you get put on a list. Dude. Might not be criminal, <laughs> but it's definitely weird. Uh, yeah. Chef Shin, Farland's Journey, Find the Cat, uh, Hakuki Chronicles of Wind and Blossom. Uh, Land Nama, Operation Tango, Same Break Game, Super Kawaii, Finding Mistakes in Panda Photos, Synaxarian, Christian Stories, Holy Martyr, Savas the Goth. Jesus Christ. That's, Why? That's the title. How is that the title? That's the title. Uh, God. Tokyo Kronos and Alt Deus Beyond Kronos Twin Pack. Toy Car Racer, Toy Car Extreme Racing RC Driver Simulator. Train Your Brain, Spot the Difference with Animal Kids Photos. Uh, Treasure Hunt on a World Trip. Trinity Fusion. Werewolf Goldfish. (laughs) Sounds legit. (laughs) Alright. Yatsume Guri, Zumba Marble Blast, Animal Hunting 3D, Baba Yaga Wood Boy. <laughs> Sorry. Evo Mon, Galaxy Mania, King and Knight, Rejoinder, Procedural Roguelite. Man, that sounds like my jam. Uh, Shopping Mall Girl, and World of Goo 2. Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> I. What is happening? Not, I, so I read. I've read what Werewolf Goldfish is, and I get the it's the Mac. concept of Werewolf, the game, uh, the party game with scooping mm. goldfish. Oh, but players are divided into two roles: the goldfish werewolf, who wants to swim around unseen, and the scoopers villagers who want to scoop up the werewolf. <laughs> Pass through checkpoints without being detected to win. Find the werewolf goldfish and scoop it up to win. Fool your opponents and victory will be yours. Up to four players can play together. That seems like a very small party size. 
Uh, and I'm right. not sure exactly how this is werewolf. It... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. News time. Lego and Nintendo teaming up again for a Super Mario World uh, Mario and Yoshi set launching in October 2024. Oh, you know, that. that that set made me realize Yoshi has arms. In, in like... You didn't, yeah! You know, you didn't know I, I didn't arms? realize that either. Where, you know what? You don't notice them on the sprite as much because they're yeah. green. And so I've never really thought about it because, yeah, his official artwork has arms even... Um, so I always just pictured because it's a pretty good cartoon for for pixel eight, pixel art at y'all, the time. It's a y'all pretty good cartoon. Y'all didn't play Mario Paint, did you? No, I did not. No, yeah, I yeah. Not. Like you, you paint a Yoshi picture and it's fucking got arms, got two arms. But um, nice. I did look at the manual, which has Yoshi with arms. It's just again on the sprite you don't see it, but on that lego set they're orange for some reason you'd think yeah. he'd turn around and knock mario the fuck out for hitting him on the head all the time <laughs> right yeah yeah <sighs> again i i still never pictured actual hitting i always assumed he was pointing but nope he batches him on the head and makes his tongue yep, stick I out i know it's a... PlayStation news, we got Concord will not have a battle pass. I thought we already knew that. Like that's that's why it's forty dollars, fifty dollars, whatever it costs. Uh it's also getting its own limited dual sense controller, because sure. Yeah. Um Gran Turismo seven update one point four nine brings six new cars, updated physics simulation model, and Iger Nordwand, I'm assuming that's a track. <clears throat> PlayStation VR two app is coming to Steam on August sixth. Um, after complaining on Twitter, uh, the guy who created the dishwasher, Vampire Smile, and Charlie Murder, and the dishwasher, the Dead Samurai, uh, his games got discounted on Xbox 360 before the store shut down. So you could have got those for 99 cents, but guess what? You listen to this on Monday, and that store is gone. It's forever gone. Way to go! You didn't get those games. How do you feel? Oh, uh, Xbox cares about preserving video. Yeah. That, that was their, their that words, goes. not mine. I just... Yeah, well, that's about how that goes. You're, you're, you're right. Don't yeah. let them care. They just care about money. That's, yeah. Come on, now. And don't say the thing. I mean, Phil said a lot it, of things. Yes, Most of them aren't you know true. What, you know what's free? Shutting the fuck up. <laughs> that is free. Truly. That is, yep. Oh, it's raining like a no, no, no one's asking you questions. You don't have to talk. Be quiet. <laughs> Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is now on Game Pass, so please be excited. My brother and them were... Dude, that thing apparently uh, killed. Enjoyed... Like, I know we joke about this shit, but like, I think that game hit like 11 million players. Oh, enjoyed yeah. Game Pass. 500 gigabytes. Yeah, it is 200, because I reinstalled it. And I had to uninstall shit. It's like two hundred and like fourteen gigabytes, and I'm like, "What? How is this sustainable? Like, I, I don't understand." It's the only game you need, so. Well, I get yeah, I guess if that's, man, it's a lot. Uh, if Game Pass tiers aren't uh, confusing enough, Microsoft is reportedly working on a cloud-only Game Pass tier, which would be cheaper than Ultimate. Family plan is still in the cards, and there are currently no plans for an ad-based tier. I mean, why not? Just throw an ad base tier in there, too. Let's have seven tiers of Game Pass. That's just totally not confusing. It's, uh... It's <sighs> uh, 241 workers at Bethesda have unionized. Good for them. Yay! Activision Blizzard has reportedly greenlit the use of AI tools for concept art and marketing materials. Well, all right. Uh, around 500 people at Blizzard's World of Warcraft and 60 QA workers have voted to unionize as well. Uh, Core Keeper is coming to Game Pass on August 27th, and the biggest world update for Microsoft Flight Simulator includes updates for the United Kingdom and Ireland. Uh, Shadows of the Damned. Crazy to think that that's probably one of the most popular flight simulators they've released. I mean, it's it's really good if you like that shit. I- yeah, it just it's great because it's on Game Pass. I'm sure more people have played that game than ever before. Oh, 100 uh, percent. Shadows of the Damned Hella Remastered launches October 31st. It'll be twenty five dollars. 
This is a new announcement, right? Yeah, the release no. date. Yeah. Well, the release date is new, but they not are the game. Ran, no. new coming. Yeah. Oh, okay. I I didn't remember this one. I remembered um, a lollipop. Uh, yeah, lollipop. Yeah. Yeah. No, this was announced a while back, um, but it's only twenty five dollars and launches on Halloween. So that's that's good Which marketing. Awesome. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to play this one. Who, uh, who's publishing it? That's a good that's question. A good question. I do not know the answer to that question. Jinx, I'm nigga. Assuming, let me see. I think the I'm physical is EA limited run. Well, well, that I know. No, yeah, no. I saw that. I don't know who's publishing. I mean, it may just be self-published uh, huh. by somebody. I don't know. I know EA had the rights, but I think they lost them because you can't buy it anymore, right, on Xbox? That doesn't ever mean that they don't have rights over it. They just don't have the full rights. Hmm. So I was just curious if they ever had rights on that game or if it was just a publishing deal. Yeah, I have no clue. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, because like um, Lollipop Chainsaw was... Who, who did that one? D3? I think it was D3. I think. <laughs> Dude, I don't but, know. But clearly that that wasn't for the actual game. Whoever did it. Um... Oh my god, sorry. It, that was Warner Brothers? Oh, that's it, right. Holy, holy shit. shit. It doesn't say who's main or who's a publisher. Well, you can the, you can pre-order it, right? So you uh, just go remake? to the store. Let me see. And then it should have the publisher in there. Let me see if I can find it. Scrolling yeah. through this. Yeah, because it's on Steam. Oh, they're publishing it. Grand yeah, self published. Yeah, yeah. self publishing. Yeah, that's neat. Twenty five. Yeah, that's okay. Cool. Yeah, I'll support that. Because like, that is the weird part where it's like, well, I pop chainsaw. Is there anyone involved in that remaster that isn't just a company that's a holding company? Oh, it's published right. by NetEase. Oh, really? Okay. That's who's doing Shadows of the Damned, according to Xbox stores. It's published by NetEase, developed by Grasshopper. Oh, so well, yeah, Steam. On PC. Yeah, I guess they doing it themselves on PC. Okay. NetEase is doing. Dang, NetEase is doing a lot here lately because they're the ones that's publishing. Um, actually, I think they might be developing too. Uh, Marvel Rivals. <laughs> is that money? Money, 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 money. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a new Scout Fold game into the fray coming October fourth. Uh, Hell Divers 2: Escalation of Freedom launches August 6th. Awesome. Uh, Skull and Bones is coming to Steam on August 22nd. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, good. The three people have more folks to play with. Terry Bogard is coming to Street Fighter 6 this autumn. Why say autumn? I say fall. I say autumn. Uh, hey, Hachi is coming to uh, Tekken 8. I think we talked about this last week. Guilty Gear, yeah, we talked about that. Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising Verugia launches August 20th. Vicala is coming October 2024. Those are words. I don't know what they mean. Uh, yeah. uh, rumor, a Slovakian retailer is listing Tales of Zillia remastered for everything. So I looked this up because I'm like, wasn't that a PS4 game? No. No, that was uh, Exelia, something like that, or uh, God Tales damn. of Zillia. You know, there's too many Tales games. Zestrelia or something, yeah. Zestiria. Uh, Zestiria, whatever. Yes, that one. Uh, that was the PS4 one I was thinking of. I didn't <laughs> realize. Zippity <laughs> I didn't realize um, how many fucking Tales games there. Are. Oh, dude, there's a ton either. of them. I knew, I, I knew I of like some one. of them, but like holy shit! Every time I turn around, there's a new one. Yeah, I played one on PC that I think I might own it. You're like a vampire girl or something, like, and you start off like trapped, and you escape your dungeon. Like there's there's a there yeah, and then of course there's Tales of Symphonia, which everyone played, and has been remade seven hundred and thirty seven times. Well, this one now is rumored to be remade. Sea Fantasy is getting an Xbox version. People are like talking about this. I don't even know what Sea Fantasy is, but it's cool. It's coming to more places. 
Uh, what else we got? What else we got? Dragon Age the Velgard is Steam Deck verified, and you don't need the EA Play app to play it on Steam. Which is, that's nice. Um, if if Sea Fantasy is the one that I'm looking at, that might actually be your jam, uh, Ken. Is it Zelda? Yeah, like a 2D Zelda looking thing. Okay. I'll be I'll be there for that. Uh Stalker 2 The Heart of Chernobyl has been delayed again, this time to November, uh, which was originally set for August. Uh, David Soliani, best known for his work on Mario Plus Rabbids, has left Ubisoft after 25 years. Uh, da, da, da. Warner Brothers acquired Multiverse's developer Play First Games. Blizzard is discussing the change from 5v5 to 6v6, or from 6v6 to 5v5. The running experiments with 6v6 again in Overwatch 2. Ha 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 ha. I mean, I might, I might come back time. if they do 6v6. It's so funny that this conversation has cropped back up and like everybody's like trying to be like, you don't remember, man, you don't remember. I was like, yes, I do. I had fun then. I do remember. I know you competitive people are like, oh my God, this and oh my God, that. You know what? I don't care. The game is a dumpster fire right now. Do something. I'm okay. good. Uh, Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver 1 and 2 remastered uh, branding was spotted at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, Capcom said they have no plans to stop producing physical games, even if over 90% of their games are game sales are digital. Uh, they also said during a shareholding, shareholder Q&A that they're considering more Mega Man games on a regular basis. Mega Man is one of our highly valued IPs, and we are considering how to create games for it uh, for an ongoing basis. Chewing. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's Mega Man. Why haven't you been putting out shit, though? Yeah, the last one was good. Like, just do more of that. <laughs> but it's not even, like, okay, even if the last one was bad, it's not like you don't have other Mega Man-related properties. Yeah, but nobody wants Legends. Come on. I was going to say X. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I knew we... nobody else wants. I don't even want, I don't even need necessarily more Battle Network. You know? What are we at, X9? That, would that be the one? Uh, yeah, I think it would be X9. There's an X9? No, there's an X8. I thought I said the next one would be X9. Because then there's... Oh, got you. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Although X7 and 8 were... Um, 3D things. Really bad games. Don't you love Command Mission? I don't like the characters, let alone the fucking... Ugh, Command Mission can eat a dick. That game is bad. Shuhei Matsumoto said Capcom wants to do more versus games like Marvel vs. Capcom. He also said they want to bring back more of their old games who are not supporting rollback, etc. to modern platforms, except Xbox. Yeah. That's a real roundabout way to say we, we like money. Yes. <laughs> SNK is working on a new Samurai Showdown action RPG and a new Art of Fighting. Well, this is interesting. Seishi Ishii, Seishi Ishii told 4Gamer that Toe Ball Number 1 was originally planned as a Chrono Trigger fighting game at first. That makes sense. That actually, yeah, because that actually explains how they got, um, oh no, um, what's his name? Kira Toriyama. Uh, that, that explains why they'd have his art style. Which is funny, because they made two of those games, just one of them never made it over here. Yeah. The second one has like an RPG mode, doesn't it? They both do. Oh, okay. Yep. And then yeah, that, that mode is also in... Um, what's that name? Ergeist. Ergeist. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Ergeist was only popular because it had Cloud and Tifa in it. That was it. Yep. And Sephiroth. Oh, yeah. I forgot I forgot old Sephi was in it, you know. And then there's a weird character that kind of looks like Red 13. That game is kind of Not bad. great. <laughs> I tried to play it. I'm very bad at it. 
over 2,600 voice actors and motion capture artists are going on strike over AI usage. Actors can work on games which have been in development for a year or longer and games as a service games, but they can't work on new games or games recently starting development. I thought they already did this. Like, I... I guess I misunderstood. No, they. I I made this comment back because when Sega after did their big push towards all the like big entertainment companies, Mm. they left the door open for video games and voice acting, and I was like, why? So you basically just made sure that the movie stars keep paychecks. Um, yeah, it was very odd to me they didn't. Now they are. But it's like, you should have just done this when you did that. Because a lot of those companies are also involved in video games. Yeah, that would have just made... Like, so we waste... Like, I don't understand. I, the business is... Maybe, so maybe someone sometimes. that's better with deals can make that make sense to me. But I, I felt like it would have been smarter to do that when you had the push of those big celebrities. Right. And we're all at the table, so let's just include everybody right now and get this done. Like, yep, let's cover those guys too, so we don't have yeah. to, like, what the heck? <sighs> all right. Um, Humble Games laid off 36 employees. The employees said everyone is affected and that Humble Games is shutting down, but told GI Biz that it's undergoing restructuring. The company is not shutting down, and its upcoming releases are not affected. Multiple sites reached out to uh, some former Humble Bundle employee or Humble Games employees. They said all roles are affected. Ziv Davis is lying about the restructuring and that all remaining projects will be completed by the PAL Group, which is a third-party company. Look, man, I, this is this seems like a perfect example of one of those. This was very long, and I'm sorry that happened to you, or I'm happy for you, because I don't even know what's happening right now. Is they fired or are they not fired? Is the company is shut down? Notoriously not a great company. Okay. Yeah. You think? Okay. Like, <laughs> wait, that's IGN's yes. uh, holder, ain't it? Yeah. yeah. They, 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 <laughs> they're the reason, uh, I believe they were the reason why, um, oh, fuck. Uh, was it, weren't they behind Giant Bomb? No. Starting to? No? no. That was CBS, wasn't it? CBS and then. Okay. Whatever that fucking uh, Red Ventures owns them now, I think, or something like that. I don't remember. All right. Red Ventures. Uh, according to Jez Corden, there's a rumor that Microsoft has been working with Capcom to fix the MT framework issues for games such as Monster Hunter Stories, Marvel vs. Capcom Collection, Mega Man Battle Network Collection, uh, issues that are causing these games to skip Xbox, which would be good. That Microsoft did something, even though people told me online that it's not Microsoft's thing to do. I uh, yeah, I mean, I I didn't understand that because it absolutely would be their thing to do if your like if my software works but it doesn't work ever at your stuff. Like, well, you need to figure out why it's not. Like, come to me and we'd be like, oh, okay, well, let's sit down and talk. Like, I mean, I I don't why we didn't do that from jump. Like, why did we have to wait, what are we, seven releases in that then skipped? And Marvel vs. Capcom was the straw that broke the camel's back. They was finally like, oh, God, can't lose this one. I mean, that's, it, that's to be fair, it's a pretty damn big one. I mean, it is. It I, it, it definitely is. Like, it, it, it's, it, it's huge. It's huge. Come on. But I just, it's just weird. But good. I'm, I'm glad. I hope this is true and they get that together because I, I really want that Marvel vs. Capcom collection on Xbox. Uh, all right. I got an email and a couple tweets, then we'll get out of here. Um, Jeremy sends an email. Says, "Hey guys, sorry I missed the deadline for questions and comments. Also, I completely forgot to congratulate you all on 800 effing episodes. I'm so glad you've kept it going this long. It really is the highlight of my week to see that ZTGD logo pop up in my podcast feed every Monday. Thank you. It's very nice." Uh, he says, so firstly, Terrence, do you play primarily on PS5 or Xbox? Xbox. He says, I ask, as I have a copy of Dragon's Dogma 2 on PS5, I'd be happy to send you. Uh, the more people that get to play that game, the better. If you're on Xbox, though, no worries. See uh, that? Well, I, yeah, I appreciate that. But yeah, I'm I'm primarily on Xbox. Even my PlayStation actually is a digital copy, too. 
Um, I don't do um this anymore. But thank you so much. But definitely, yeah, find somebody to share that with because yeah, fantastic game. He says the more people, the more people that get to play that game, the better. If you're on Xbox, okay, it's more fun to have some buddies with high level pawns that you can hire. Second, I'm still loving Baldur's Gate 3, but the map was constantly rotating and I kept going the wrong way. <laughs> I switched the map to always face north and realized that I much prefer it that way in any game I play. Uh, what's your guys' thoughts on that? Yeah, let's and, let's keep the map fixed. <laughs> yep, I, it's it funny too because <laughs> that was the game that that yeah that messed that that, that kept messing me up because I was doing the same thing. Like I was like, oh, okay, this is where I gotta go, and so I start running, and then I get I'm like, wait, what? And I look at the map, I'm like, oh my god, I'm even further away now. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was the one. I realized I need to I need to lock the map. It doesn't need it does not need to rotate with me. <laughs> Uh, he says, thanks for the show. Oh, and Terrence, if you do wind up playing Dragon's Dogma 2, might I suggest starting out with a ranged class? It seems much less chaotic when you can stay back and deal the damage instead of having everything landing on your head. Okay, I'm done with this book. Take that, George Railroad Martin. Man, y'all ain't never gonna get the end of that series. And you are right, sir. I actually, um... Because I played the the trial and I switched from because I think I started off as a sorcerer or whatever the the first level is mage, but uh, I went to archer and I I love the archer. You're, you're absolutely right. Standing in the back and being able to line up shots and stuff while everybody else is forward. And I especially love that I have a jump kick. Like I, I like to uh, run up and like just jump kick goblins over and then like my warrior comes and finish them off. As is tradition. But anyways, yeah. Yes, as is tradition. <laughs> But yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, you're good. All right. Tweets, then we'll go. Uh, Shogun writes in says, Deadpool was amazing. Yes, it was. That's a pretty good movie. It there's there's good. a lot of subtlety in that movie that I'm just like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, my daughter kept asking, what does that mean? Well, I, oh, okay, listen. No, it, yeah, it was good, though. Yeah, like my that. son looked over at me a couple times when I clapped and laughed. And I was like... Yep. He's like, what? what? Yeah, he was like, what? 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 I was like, you just, you don't understand. I was like, you don't get it. Right. (laughs) Don't worry about it. Don't don't worry about it. What did What did he say? What was good? When? When? when, Ah, I can't even talk about it because that's that's. that's No, there's too many. There's too many cameos in that movie of like. Yeah, I I don't want to because that was like I I didn't get spoiled on all of them. Luckily, um, I did a few. But there, the especially the one was I was like, oh shoot, like yeah, th- that game, oh that movie, it was, it was really good, it was really yeah. Good. Like there's so much stuff in that movie that like you probably won't notice till your second or third time watching it. Mm-hmm. I mean, like oh oh, there's that. <laughs> yep. Oh, and you don't have to be invested in the Marvel storyline, which you know, even as a Marvel fan, has become much for me. So, like, you could watch this without having seen all the shows and all the movies up to now. What are, like, this is just a standalone fun film. Like, you should, you should... Oh, yeah, he enjoyed it. it. Like, he even, I even asked him, I was like, did you even enjoy it with not having any references? He's like, oh, absolutely. He's like, it was hilarious. Yep, yeah, Lexi said the same thing. So, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was good. All right, he says, games today go from overhype followed by extreme disappointment. We're currently seeing Star Wars Outlaws getting treated like Starfield. Feels like the community is judging that game based on how they wished it was and not how we how it actually is. We're judging explosions now? Uh, I never felt like I knew how the game should be built. Today everyone thinks they're a critic and they have to go judge these games with such a fine-tooth comb. We are judging explosions now. It feels like the developers are getting punished for trying to create. It's a business first. Dude, we had issues over puddles. I don't know if you remember Puddlegate. Uh, remember the what was the one with the fruit that you could shoot? Oh, could GTA. Shoot Halo, was it GTA and Halo shoot. or something? Yeah. yeah, that's what it was. Yep, yep, yep. So like it's that stuff has always been there, but it's just it's like everything else now. It's so much more magnified because of social media, because of Twix and and TikTok and stuff like that. Like, and he's right. Everybody thinks that they're a critic, even though they don't know nothing. And at the end of the day, and that's why, like, even when I review games, um, I I am talking about you know what works and what doesn't work or whatever else for me. But at the end of the day, that is that artist dream or vision for that thing so if they wanted that explosion to look like that yeah it's not a guy i maybe i wanted the explosion look but that's their 
vision of of whatever like and us playing that we're buying into their vision not what we wanted right like that's we got the i don't know man people i could write a book on this stuff like it just it annoys me that's why i had to leave twitter twix whatever the fuck it's called anymore i mean people's miserable out there man they're just like i hate everything everything sucks i'm like well no like anthony and i were talking about this before you got on the show like video games haven't exactly been like like hitting that peak lately like they're good but they're not like oh my god this is amazing you know you're right yep but like not everything sucks either like that's that's the misnomer like just because i'm not over the moon like i was when let's say like you know ps4 launched or n64 or something like that doesn't mean it's bad it just means it's not as exciting and that's fine like I don't know. People are weird, man. Negativity gets engagement. Engagement gets them apparently money now or something. Or like, I don't even know. Like some of these people don't get money. They just get like attention. And I'm like, it is literally, it's a black mirror episode of like, if I don't get enough attention, I'm going to freak out. Like, yep. That's exactly what it's so funny. That is what we are about to have to be trading in our, what is the Instagram likes? That was that episode with, uh, Bryce Dallas Bryce Howard. Dallas Howard. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, I like it's one of my favorite episodes. Best use but of yeah. likes is well, yes. stranding. Oh yeah, oh, Death Stranding has nothing. likes too. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. does. You can't do anything with them though, so. Nope. That's nope. the point. <laughs> you just what? get kudos. Just give me it. some currency. Let me let me spend my likes. Like I don't man, I don't get it. You know what? I think it's I think from Kojima that's the joke. Right, you can't trade the likes for shit. I mean, Actually, you yeah. might you might say that about Kojima, but then I see his Twitter account. I'm just like, this motherfucker is just a giant. Oh, look at writes, me, bro. He writes, yeah, he 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 writes stories that are like you know critical of likes, but then at the same time, he's using his influence to meet celebrities he likes. So you know, yeah, and get free movies that he gets to watch, and it's like he, he, we all do it. Come on now. But anyway, that's all I got for this week. Um, if you'd like to send us an email, that would be great. Podcast at ztgd.com. If you want to tweet us, it's at ZTGD Radio on the Twitter. Um, I don't have a Phoenix down to plug. Drew, Drew keeps telling me he's coming back after the move. So. Yeah, I think it's going to get settled and stuff. Yeah, I don't know what, what game they're going to do. First it was a baby, then it was the move. What will be your next excuse, Drew? Huh? First day of school, probably. <laughs> Dude, this kid ain't going to school for like five years. Come on now. Is he really got to prep five years for the first day of school? Maybe. You don't know. Listen, times have changed. Like, they, yeah, he, he might. Drew... <laughs> Drew, who doesn't spend money on Xbox, he gets for Game Pass for free. Afford the house, sir. Paw Patrol. <laughs> Paw Patrol, man, it paid off. In the end, it paid off. Oh it God. did. It did. Paw Patrol. <laughs> Paw Patrol helped build this house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. But anyway, we'll be back next week to talk about more games, including some games we couldn't talk about this week, and probably some more games we can't talk about next week. Is that just yeah. how it goes? So, if nobody has anything else, we'll get out of here. Peace, bitch. Alrighty, and it goes something like this. <laughs>